Yo! What's up? I'm Adam. And I'm Patrick. And welcome to the Microsoft Fabric Launch Digital Event. Ah, oh, Patrick, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, this man. is part of Microsoft Build 2023. A lot of great news coming out of the conference talking about Microsoft Fabric. That's it's right. amazing. That's right. It started with Satya. He kind of kicked off the main intro and announcement of Microsoft Fabric. And he had two big themes two I heard out things. of that. Two big AI things. and then governance and security. Two very important Very topics. important things. And then Scott Guthrie continued that discussion a little more. And Amir and Arun finished it off yesterday with the main session they did talking about what Microsoft Fabric actually is. So today, Patrick, how, how is this, how is this going to flow? How is this launch event going to flow? So Arun and Amir are going to kick it off, yeah. right? And what's going to be great, we're going to see, Amir's going to show us and introduce us to all these different pieces and parts of this new Microsoft Fabric. We're all going to get on the same page. That's right. See what it's all about. And then as this event continues, we're going to go deeper into each section of this with some great speakers that'll be with us. To kick off day one, let's hand it over to Arun and Amir to hear what Microsoft Fabric is all about. Take it away, guys. All right. Uh, hey, folks. We're so excited to be here. We've been hard at work for the last couple of years. We can't wait to show you what we have. We can't wait to get this in the hands of customers. So over the next you know, 75 or so minutes, you're going to see our story, but you're also going to see tons of exciting demos. So let's get started. Amir, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Analytics in the era of AI. Um, so when you think about the problem we are trying to solve, we recognize that in today's world, it's literally awash with data. Not just data from our transactional systems of record, but data from our, the world around us. The devices we use, the applications we build, our inter interpersonal reactions, and so much more. And we recognize that in today's world, our competitive advantage starts from data. That's why the critical question that all of our customers are dealing with, we are dealing with, is how do we take advantage of all of this data and translate that into a competitive advantage? This is exactly what we're focused on as Microsoft. So if you look at our analytics portfolio, over the last decade, we've launched a whole bunch of cloud services, Data Factory, Synapse Data Warehousing, Purview, Event Hub, Data Explorer, Azure AI, Power BI, Synapse Spark, and Azure Databricks. Most of our products have been built from the ground up here at Microsoft, and today we see a ton of adoption. So if you just look at the adoption that our analytics products have across the planet, can you believe it? 420,000 organizations in pretty much every country on the planet use our products in production. We process about 8 trillion messages every single day on our messaging stack. And we manage over 33 exabytes of data on behalf of our customers. And today we have over 5 million developers building on our platform. All of this is great, but uh, you know, if you just look at the product leadership, if you look at the four Gartner Magic Quadrants that cover the analytics space, data integration, analytics, AI, and BI, one of the things you'll be interesting to note is Microsoft is the only vendor with a leadership position in all four Gartner Magic Quadrants. And the reason this is important is by partnering with Microsoft, our customers get really strong capabilities in every area, and even more importantly, they can lean on Microsoft to make all of these things work well together so that they can focus the resources on their developers on driving business value versus systems integration. However, the industry today is at the crossroads. The, why is that? Because the era of AI has dawned with the launch of ChatGPT, and AI is causing a massive platform shift, causing us to pretty much rethink everything from the ground up. However, AI is pretty much only as good as your data. So if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. And that means that it's even more important for customers today to get their data in the shape that they need it so that it's ready for, the, for them to apply AI and be able to get transformative business value. However, uh, if you look at what's happened over the last decade, there has been the good news is there's been a ton of innovation. Uh, not a day goes by, not a week goes by, not a month goes by where there's some exciting new product or open source technology. However, this has also caused a ton of fragmentation. If you want to get a sense of the complexity that is confronting our customers, just take a look at this slide. Now, this slide, you're not meant to read every single icon on the slide, but this is put together by First Mark Venture Capital, a VC firm in the Valley, and it shows you the data and AI landscape. Uh, every little icon here is a product or technology that is confronting our customers. So when our customers are looking at getting uh, value out of data, this is the wall of complexity that's confronting them. 
And so when I talk to chief data officers, when I talk to customers, and this is a life quote from a chief data officer we're closely with, but it's broadly representative of what we hear from our customers, is please simplify. I want to be the chief data officer. I don't want to be the chief integration officer. Customers are tired of paying the integration tax. So this is exactly what we're out to solve. So today, uh, at Microsoft Build, we're very excited to announce the launch of Microsoft Fabric. You can think about Microsoft Fabric as the data platform for the era of AI. It's been built from ground up with a bunch of capabilities that allow you to go from the data lake all the way to the business user. Data integration, data engineering, data warehousing, real-time analytics, data science, Power BI, and a brand new product called Activator. All of them delivered as software as a service. All of them delivered as a single integrated product, accelerating productivity for developers, accelerating time to value, and making it easy for you to bring AI to your data. So let's talk about Fabric, all right? Um, so when you think about Fabric, here's exactly what we're trying to do. First of all, it's a complete analytics platform. It's deeply unified in terms of experiences, in terms of architecture, so every single developer can sign up within a few seconds and get real business value in minutes. It's delivered completely as software as a service, just like Office 365, just like Power BI, so we can make everyone really, really productive without worrying about wiring things together, configuring things, monitoring things, things just work. The second pillar of the Fabric Valley proposition is the lake-centric and open architecture. So we're going to introduce you to one lake, a single unified SaaS data lake for the entire organization that is shared by all of the analytics engines. And you can think about one lake as almost like OneDrive, but for your data. Microsoft is doing something that we've never done before, uh, that most of uh, the industry hasn't yet fully embraced, is across all of Fabric, we're deeply embracing open data formats and open APIs. Because openness is critical for our customers. Our customers do not want to be locked in. They don't want to have to re-ingest and re-ingest data over and over again, just because different proprietary analytics engines use different proprietary formats. So across all of Fabric, you'll know, you know it's exciting to note that all of the data is in a completely open format based upon Parquet, the compression format, and Delta Lake as the metadata layer. The third part of our value is really about business users. And we want to make sure that business users automatically get value from the data. And this is where Power BI is the bridge. Because Power BI is part of Fabric, it, and it is deeply integrated into Office, Every Office user can take advantage of all of the data with all of the security and all of the permissions intact, which means that the data in Fabric is deeply integrated where everybody works, deeply integrated into Excel, deeply integrated into Teams, deeply integrated into PowerPoint, deeply integrated into SharePoint. So literally, the data is everywhere where business users are. And finally, perhaps the most exciting part is AI-powered. Right? And this is massive, folks, because what we're really doing is bringing the power of AI, bringing the power of large language models across all of your Fabric experiences. So it's literally Fabric is built from the ground up for the, AI, for the era of AI. So you'll see co-pilot experiences throughout. You will see the ability to bring chat GPT type experiences to your data. And you'll also see the ability for you to be able to get amazing insights from all of your data. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So with that, uh, I'm, go I'm going to just give you a quick preview of the Fabric portfolio. There's a new, uh, there's a set of applications uh, or workloads that run uh, that are part of Fabric. The first is Data Factory. You can think about this as the next version of Data Factory that combines the power and scale of Azure Data Factory with the low-code experiences in Power Query used by tens of millions of users in Excel and Power BI and Power Apps brought together into a single unified SaaS product. Number two, Synapse Data Engineering. We have a brand new Spark experience that literally every developer can get started in seconds, and you get delightful uh, development experiences that make your Spark engineers very, very productive. A brand new data science experience that is backed by the power of Azure Machine Learning. A brand new Synapse Data Warehouse that not only fully separates compute and storage, but also provides you infinite scale and works with all of its data natively in open storage formats based on Parquet and Delta Lake. A real-time analytics engine based on Synapse Data Explorer or Azure Data Explorer, which works at massive scale with semi-structured data, XML, JSON, that come from your IoT devices or your application telemetry or your log data. Power BI, a new version of Power BI deeply integrated across the entire Fabric stack and a brand new product called Data Activator that Amir is going to tell you more about. All of these workloads, you can think about our purpose-built 
for individual personas and, and specific tasks. Data scientist, data engineer, data warehousing professional, BI professional, but all of them uh, work on top of the same data with one lake. You can think about one lake as one dry fair data. It's a single unified SaaS data lake for the entire organization. It not only provides storage out of the box for all of the workloads in Fabric, but also provide, uh, gives you the ability to virtualize data wherever it exists. So that's what we're going to talk about today, Re Microsoft Fabric, the data platform for the era of AI. And to go deeper, I'm going to transition to my friend Amir Nets. Amir, over to you. Thank you, Arun. So <clears throat> we are going to start by, by really following the, this, the, this framework that Arun provided. We're going to look at the uh, in the four pillars, the complete analytics platform, the lake-centric and open, the empowerment of every business user, the AI-empowered uh, platform that we have created, we're just going to go one by one in the, over the next hour. So let's start with the complete analytics platform. Um, when you talk about the complete analytics platform, we really talk about that we have everything, and it's just one product. As everyone said, it's not just a bundle, it's not just a thin UI layer, it's really one unified platform in experience, in architecture, and even the way you buy it. And it's sassified. So when we look at the platform, Arun talked about the seven workloads that we have on the top inside, inside the product, but we have a lot of common services that are just spanning each one of those platforms. There's just a single user interface, a single sign-on, a, uh, a single way to manage all your projects inside Fabric. There is uh, a single way to manage a project in the sense of CICD. Uh, there is one place to store all your data, one format for all your data, one way to discover your data, one way to, mon one way to monitor your jobs, one way to do compliance and governance. It's just one project. Product. And as we go through the demos, and we're going to see tons of demos today, uh, you're going to see that you actually forgot that there were used to be you know, many products that we used to sell. It's just one integrated product. And that product is providing, provided as a SaaS, software as a service. And when we talk about software as a service, we talk about the experiences not of Azure and not of AWS and not of GCP. These are PaaS experiences. We're talking about something as is much more like Office 365 or very much like Power BI. So we start with the five by five principle. We mean five seconds to sign up, five minutes to wow. And it just means that it's frictionless onboarding. It means that the, uh, everything you want to provision is fast, just like you want to create a new PowerPoint. It's just instantly happening. The same thing will happen to your data warehouse or your uh, Python notebooks. Uh, the UI looks like Office. It has minimal knobs. It's auto-optimized. It's auto-integrated. And just like Office, there's a very strong concept of a tenant. You know, think about office. Somebody owns the tenant. Everybody in the company uh, works on the same tenant. You cannot have two Office 365 tenants in the same company, and you cannot have two fabrics in the same company. There's only one fabric, and everybody in the company is on the same fabric. And just like with Office 365, all the policies for compliance, for security, for governance are set centrally so the individual developers don't have to worry about them. You, and the enterprise can Rest assured that every project being built is going to be complying with all the policies being set centrally. Now, the other thing that happens with, with Fabric is that we're bringing a lot of different personas together. Personas used to work on different products. We're bringing the BI professionals together with the data warehouse administrators, together with the data engineers, together with the data scientists, and so forth. And we know they're not the same. We know that they care about different things. We know that they are spending their day differently. So even though they're going to work on a single system, on a single fabric, all together, each one of them is going to get a slightly different experience, an experience that is putting them and the thing that they care about in the center. So the data BI professional will not see exactly the same thing a data scientist will see and not exactly the same thing that the data engineer will see. So to get a feel and the first experience with fabric, we're going to see a demo here where we'll see how we navigate the different experience and you'll see that we're starting with Power BI. Power BI is part of Fabric and you'll see that, in fact, once you know, Fabric becomes now publicly available, then every Power BI tenant will become a Fabric tenant. It just automatically happens and you're going to see we start with Power BI and then we're going to switch to a persona that is data science, switch to a persona data engineering, and then we're going to build something. So we'll see how we build our first data warehouse on Fabric. So let's have Justina take us through it. Let's run the video. In this demo, we'll take a look at how different data professionals can easily get started and collaborate in Microsoft Fabric. We're starting out on the Power BI homepage, which is the ideal environment for a BI analyst that wants to build data sets and reports. However, 
Fabric offers many persona-based experiences. I can easily navigate from Power BI to something like Synapse Data Science. We see the suggested items change to experiments and models, whilst the recommended materials focus on getting started with ML models. Since I'm a data warehousing professional, I'm going to navigate to the Synapse Data Warehouse experience. And let's get started by creating a new warehouse. All I have to do is give it a name and choose a sensitivity label, and I'm instantly navigated to the warehouse experience. I did not have to set up any clusters, networking, or storage accounts. As a first step, let's bring some data into my warehouse. I can navigate to my pipeline experience in a single click and can choose from many connectors that will bring data in at petabyte scale. I'm going to choose Azure SQL as my source, select all the tables I want to copy, specify column mappings, and that's it. I can now start copying my data. Navigating back to the warehouse, I can see my tables have been automatically created for me. I can explore my data by filtering it directly in the table view or writing my own SQL queries. Fabric experiences cater to both pro developers and low code users. In the warehouse case, this means that users can leverage a visual query editor for creating their queries. Users can use a graphical user interface, including the ability to do complex joins without ever needing to write any code. In Fabric, we have also combined the data warehouse directly with Power BI, making it really easy for data engineers and business analysts to collaborate over the same data. Here, I've got the built-in modeling view, where I can easily create relationships between all of my different tables. I can also use this experience to add new measures that I need for my BI model. And because these experiences are all integrated, we take care of performance tuning and keeping all the data in sync. Now with one click, I can create a Power BI report. I can see my tables, including my newly created measures. I can drag and drop my fields into the report. I can see that my table has 30 million rows. I can now build out my Power BI report just like I normally would. Navigating back to the workspace, I can see my entire project is ready with my pipeline, warehouse, data set, and report. I can also see how everything comes together in the built-in lineage view. To conclude, Microsoft Fabric dramatically simplifies the process of building out end-to-end -end complex analytics projects. I was able to ingest data, build out my data warehouse and BI report, all without needing to configure any infrastructure or leaving the Fabric experience. So you start getting a feel for how Fabric is, is constructed and the kind of user experiences we provide. Notice that it really is a blend of what you love about Synapse and what you love about Office and Power BI. It is catering for both the local developer that come from Power BI and the professional developer that is coming from, from Synapse. But you don't have, even have to have an Azure account, an Azure subscription to use Fabric. It's incredibly simple. And to really understand how to build more stuff inside Fabric, we have to introduce the next concept. And this is the concept of One Lake. Fabric is all about being lake-centric and open. And OneLake, as I once said, it is the OneDrive for data. It has a lot of parallels to OneDrive. You know, it just shows up. You know, just like you have an Office 365 and it just has OneDrive, same here. You have the Fabric tenant and it just has OneLake. You never buy OneLake, it's always there. You cannot buy another OneLake, you cannot be two OneLakes. You know, mathematically it doesn't work, there's only one OneLake. And just like in Office 65, Excel, Word, PowerPoint will save automatically their documents to OneDrive, all the workloads that we have inside Fabric will automatically save their data into OneLake and they'll save it in a well-structured way. So every time you create a project in a workspace, it will get automatically a subfolder in, in OneLake. And if you create a warehouse, it will create a subfolder inside the subfolder of the uh, uh, workspace. So it just automatically organizes itself. So all the data is being stored in OneLake and once it's being stored, OneLake provides a lot of SaaS services. It will automatically scan the data for PII. It will automatically compute lineage over all the pieces that you are making uh, your project. It will, uh, if, 
it will automatically allow you to assign uh, MIP labels, Microsoft Information Protection labels, to each one of the data artifacts and compute the inheritance of those MIP labels so that once you have a, perhaps a piece of confidential information, any downstream artifact will also become confidential as well. It will index all the data for search. It will manage your compliance and governments. It will allow you to share. Sharing in, in one leg is just like sharing in one drive. So all the data is being saved into one leg and you get this incredible set of services. But it's more than that. It's not really, not only just where the data is being saved, but how the data is being saved. You see, Fabric has tons of compute engines. We have compute engines, for example, for building, for doing data engineering, for doing data integration. We have the Spark engine. It's great for building lake houses in one lake. We also have a great T-SQL engine. That's the one that you know from SQL Server, from Synapse. It's great for building a relational transactional data warehouse, and it will also be stored in one lake. And then we have, of course, uh, you know, as, as Data Explorer, uh, or the KQL database. This is awesome for anything that has telemetry or IoT signals, uh, any kind of unstructured data at mass volumes. This is the perfect engine that you can use, and it will also store its data in one lake. And lastly, of course, you all know Power BI and all the amazing things that you can put in the semantic models to compute KPIs and other metrics of the organization. Everything gets stored in one lake, but that's not the point. The point is everything gets stored in exactly the same format. We're using the open format of Delta files with, uh, with parquet storage for the data that is shared across all our engines. We're doing away with proprietary formats. And what it means is it doesn't really matter which engine saved the data into one lake. That one copy is good for everything. One engine stores it, every other engine can instantly use the data. We call it the one copy principle. One copy is good for everything. And we optimize each one of our compute engines in order to work natively with this Delta Parquet format. So it doesn't feel slow. It's fully optimized. In fact, there is no other format but Delta Parquet. So we have all these engines that are sharing the same format. One copy is good for everything, but as they go and one need to read the data, we need to make sure that we are having just one security model. So we don't have to set security separately in the BI engine versus the uh, data warehousing engines versus the lake and so forth. So we are also introducing one more layer, which is the one security layer. You define one time the security for every piece of data, that security is stored in the lake, enforced uniformly across all the compute engines. So we have one lake to store all your data, one copy where all the, data, all the engines are sharing the exact same format of the data, and one security definition that is enforced uniformly. So we're going to see this concept of one copy in action. And we start with, well, let's not do Northwind, let's not do Fabricam, let's do, not do Contoso, let's start with something real. We start by loading the true MS Sales database of Microsoft. And you know, we have quite a lot of data at Microsoft. Uh, we are not a small company. We have about 20 terabytes of data. And what you see here on the screen is how we load the data into OneLake. And you can see here the, the pipelines in action. The same pipelines that you know and love from Azure has been sassified. Uh, and now we have the data factory built into, into Fabric, and you can see it on the screen. And it takes about 15 minutes to load this 20 terabyte of data. Okay, so now the database is, data is loaded, and what we can do is we are going to start using the data. We have loaded the 20 terabytes into a lake house, the MS Sales lake house, and you're going to see the one copy in action. You're going to see that our SQL engines automatically gets to, to have a data warehouse working directly on top of this Delta Parquet files in the lake. You don't have to define the data warehouse. It just shows up out of nowhere, and you can instantly uh, query and run SQL queries uh, against that data. And then Justina, who's going to do the demo, she's going to discover something is wrong with the data and she needs to fix the data. And then she's going to use a Spark notebook to do that. And as, since the Spark notebook and the data warehouse are both looking at exactly the same set of files in the lake, you'll see that the changes she's making in Spark are automatically reflected in the data warehouse. There's no need to load the data into the data warehouse. And then we're going to build some Power BI reports, and you'll see that it's working incredibly fast with no need to import the data to Power BI. Everything is using the same one copy in the lake, and then Justine is going to do some slicing and dicing in Excel. Again, slicing and dicing billions of rows without exporting any data. So one copy in the lake is going to do everything. So let's take it, Justina. Let's see how different data professionals can collaborate on top of the same copy of data 
stored in the lake house. As a SQL analyst, I can navigate to the SQL endpoint that comes automatically pre-wired to my lake house with no setup needed. This opens up the warehouse UI, which is powered by our serverless SQL engine. This is a completely revamped warehouse experience. There's true separation of compute and storage, and the warehouse is fully optimized to work on top of Delta Parquet with excellent out-of-the-box performance. I can see all the familiar constructs to me, like my schema, stored procedures, views, and queries. As a next step, let's go ahead and write a SQL query to explore our data. To get started, I want to see how many rows of data I'm dealing with in my revenue table. Writing a quick query in the editor shows me I'm working with 3.5 billion rows of data, all stored in the lake. Let's write another query that looks at the sum of revenue and gross revenue across distribution channels and fiscal months. We're even going to query data across different lake houses and warehouses in our workspace, all in the same query. We can see the SQL query runs and returns a result almost immediately, scanning all the 3.5 billion rows of data and giving me my aggregated numbers. But taking a closer look, we can see it looks like I'm facing a data quality issue with my data. Instead of getting a channel name for one of my entries, I am getting what appears to be the GUID instead. I'm going to jump into a notebook and use Spark to fix the bug. We can see the lake house is tightly integrated into the notebook experience, and I can just drag and drop my table onto the notebook and run them from there. Upon running the cell, the notebook uses serverless Spark life pools, meaning things start to run immediately. And in just a couple of seconds, I get a preview of my table. I'm now going to write some Spark code, replacing the GUID with the correct channel name. Once my notebook has finished running, I'm going to immediately rerun the same query in the warehouse. We can now see that the issue has been fixed and all the data appears correctly labeled in the table. Finally, the business analyst can also make use of the data in the lake house. I can simply navigate to the built-in modeling view and start developing my BI data model directly in the same warehouse experience. After all my data has been prepared, I can now move into creating a brand new Power BI report. As I open my report, I can see all the tables on the side, but no data has actually been loaded into Power BI at this point. This is just a pointer to Delta Parquet files stored in the lake. This is because Power BI now supports direct lake mode, which means it can natively read Parquet files directly in the lake at blazing fast speeds. Let's take a look. I'm going to start by dragging in the count of rows and we can see that we have 3.5 billion rows of data in the revenue table. I'm now going to drag in the sum of revenue. I'm going to break it out by product type and let's make things nice and big. And then I'll also add fiscal quarter to the legend and finally change the chart type. And you can see everything is running so smoothly. And as I slice and dice my data, I get all the interactivity I would expect with instant response times. This volume of data would have taken hours to ingest using standard ETL tools. But with direct leak mode, users can now get the amazing performance of import mode without needing to load any data, managing refresh schedules, or worrying about latency. As a final step, we can take this even further and empower every Excel user to benefit from data stored in the lake house. Here I'm in Excel connected to the MS Sales lake house, and I can easily build out a pivot table directly on top of the same data stored in the lake. To conclude, with Fabric, data engineers have a frictionless experience building out their enterprise data lake house and can easily democratize this data for all users and organization. So you start seeing the, the power of this one copy concept. You don't need to anymore to do copying of data, movement of data, loading of data to the data warehouse, import, export, importing into Power BI. In fact, I've been doing BI for about 30 years now, and it's always been these two choices that are always awful. One is, the, the idea is, hey, let's just use the BI tool to do just dashboarding for visualization. And then whenever we need data, we're going to run direct query into the data warehouse and get the data when we need it. Sounds great on paper. 
but it's slow. Data warehouses edges are not great at slicing and dicing data. So what almost everybody is choosing, 90% of choosing is a second option. Second option is, hey, let's use the specialized BI engine that we have in Power BI, let's import the data so now the reports will work incredibly fast. So it's always kind of been the, the choice between uh, slow or fast but with duplication of data. But in Trident, as you saw at the very end of Justina's demo, we're introducing something new. For the first time, after three decades, what we're doing is we're introducing something we call the direct lake mode. And the direct lake mode is giving you the best of both worlds. You're using the BI engine to query the data, but you never have to import the data into the BI engine because the BI engine is working di and directly on top of the same files that the data warehouse was working on. So those data parquet files in the lake are shared between the data warehouse and the BI engine. So the BI engine can give you the same performance of import mode without any duplication of the data. And to really see it in action, I'll have Christian Wade run the next demo for you. Let's go, Christian. Here we have a lake house containing anonymized finance data. These tables are stored in the Delta Lake format and are fully compatible with Parquet-based interfaces. Any tool or process that speaks Parquet can read these files. The data for the revenue table is almost a terabyte in its raw form, but here it's been compressed across five Parquet files. The tables we see in the background in Pavet Desktop match the table names in the lake house. They are nothing more than pointers to the Parquet files and haven't loaded any real data as yet. Power BI can work directly with data in the data lake at blazing fast speeds without any prior loading. This is because Power BI has natively adopted the same Delta Parquet format used by the lake house and the warehouse. I'm now going to create a Power BI report directly from the data lake. Business users can create beautiful reports in seconds with snappy instant response times. And I'm going to count the values so that we can see we have almost 3 billion rows in this table. We've got instant response times, instant gratification. Let's drag on actual revenue and fiscal month. We'll make it nice and big. We get all the interactivity that we would expect. And I'd like to point out that the query durations are in milliseconds. This volume of data would have taken hours using standard data ingestion techniques for ETL tools. We've blown the performance benchmarks for reading Parquet out of the water. Now, you may ask, how would a schema or data update affect the user experience? Well, let's find out. I have some geography data in this CSV file that I'd like to add to the model. I'll convert it to a delta table, refresh the list, and it appears in the Lakehouse tables. Now let's refresh the field list in Power BI Desktop, and there's the new geography table. I didn't have to reconnect, and the system just picked up where it left off. To summarize, we've unlocked massive data with blazing fast performance, and we didn't have to copy a single row of data. We didn't have to manage ETL jobs into the data warehouse. We didn't have to manage data loads into the Power BI dataset. One Lake's unified storage format enables a single copy of data that works with Spark jobs, Python notebooks, is served through a data warehouse interface, and users can create beautiful Power BI reports in seconds without any data duplication. Isn't it just amazing, incredible? This is Joe dropping for anybody who has been using Power BI. This idea of this one copy that is sitting in the lake and can be used everywhere without any importation, any uh, any loading is, is, is so powerful so that we really fell in love with it and we thought we should take it to the next level because there are other dimensions where data might be duplicated. So we have all the data shared across all our computes, but people might duplicate data because they want to share data between teams, not because they want to share data between computes. If I have the finance team that has built a data warehouse and maybe the marketing team wants to use the revenue table from the data warehouse when they build their lake house, well today it's mostly you have to export out of the data warehouse and import into the lake house but this is where we introduce something else. We introduce something that it's called shortcuts. And shortcuts allows us to use data across teams and across 
data warehouses and lake houses by simply pointing to the folders holding the Delta Parquet files. Shortcuts are very much like the shortcuts you have on your desktop, where you are, have pointers to folders and files and applications. We have the same idea just happening inside one lake. And when you do that, you can instantly use the data that comes from the other data warehouse without any degradation of performance and without any duplication of data and without any latency. That's awesome, right? But we also know that today, one lake is kind of empty. We are just releasing it. So we need to really figure out where the rest of the data is. And we know that the rest of the data is not in one lake. It is somewhere else in other storage system. So that idea of shortcuts, we can actually apply to other storage system. So if you have the data in Azure, ADLS, if you have that data in Amazon S3 and soon in Google Storage, you will be able to shortcut from one lake into the files that you have in those storage systems and they instantly become part of one lake. You're not seeing any degradation of performance if you're in the same region and you don't have to duplicate the data. Because suddenly, one lake is expanding itself to cover all your existing storage systems. So one lake is this one place to store all your data across all your people, across all your projects, across all your regions, across all your clouds. One lake is a multi-cloud system. So what we're going to see in the next demo, Justina is going to show, show us how she's going to shortcut to get the revenue table within one lake. And then she's going to create another shortcut. She's going to, she needs to get some images from Amazon S3. She's going to create a shortcut. Uh, and you'll see the images shows up automatically and they become part of one lake without any data movement. And then the last part, Justina is going to show you exactly why we call one lake the one drive for data. So let's roll it. In this demo, I'm a data engineer preparing data for my marketing team. I've already bought some data into the lake house. In this next step, I want to merge it with sales data for lead generation reporting. The sales team has already prepared the centrally managed certified data, and they want to reuse it. To do this, I'm going to add a new shortcut, which allows me to use one copy of data across teams. I can choose from a variety of sources, including data already in Fabric. I'm going to select one lake as the source, and I can browse the one lake data hub and find the MS Sales lake house. I can easily select the table I need, and in just a few seconds, my table appears as a first-class citizen in my lake house. No data has been duplicated, and I will always have the most up-to-date data available. But there's more. We know that many enterprises have existing data lakes. While with shortcuts, users can leverage one copy across clouds with no data movement. I can light up data not only from ADLS Gen 2, but even S3 from AWS. Now for my solution, I would like to merge customer logos alongside revenue and marketing data. And I happen to have stored all of these logos in an S3 bucket. All I have to do is select S3 as the source, specify its location, and populate all of my account information. On the next screen, I can give my shortcut a name, add the relative path, and that's it. Within seconds, I can see a shortcut created in the file section, which is the messy unstructured data lake portion of the lake house. We can navigate through all the different folders and even explore the files, despite the fact that data never physically left S3. Before I get started with my analysis, I realize I'm missing a line of finance company logos, which I have on my desktop. In Fabric, we strive to make one lake the one drive for your data. Let's take a look. Here I've opened up my local Windows file explorer and can see that alongside my OneDrive folder, I also have a one lake folder synced. Navigating through it, I can open up my workspace, my lake house I was just working in, and I can navigate to the tables and files folders. If I jump into the files section, I can easily navigate through the folder structure, open up the retail folder sitting in Amazon S3 directly in my file explorer. I can even open up the same image locally that I was looking at in the lake house, despite the fact it is still sitting in my Amazon storage account. I'm going to jump back into files to add my finance company logos. I have the logo images saved on my desktop, so I'm just going to drag the folder inside. And I can automatically see the finance folder show up. My data is now going to get synced back into the lake house. Let's navigate back and take a look. I'm going to refresh the lake house, and I can see the new finance folder show up. Navigating through it, I can easily explore the images inside, just like I did on my desktop. Now that I have all my data in the lake house, I can transform it all in the same uniform way without worrying whether the data was ingested, whether it came from another lake house, or if it came from S3. 
isn't it just amazing how such a complex, techy comp uh, topic such as a data lake has been converted to something so simple that it just looks like OneDrive that every business user can use, every data analyst can use. This is part of the power of SaaS. You also saw the power of shortcuts and how it allows really to bring all the data you already have accumulated, especially if you work with Databricks. I know we have a lot of customers that have, uh, are using Databricks and with shortcuts and the fact that we share the same data format as the lake houses of Databricks, it really allows us to do some amazing things with the existing data that you have in the organization. So Justina is going to show us next how she's going to use the shortcuts to connect to the data of Databricks both in ADLS and S3, and she's going to run queries that are really crossing clouds. So let's take the next demo. We're going to take a look at how customers can leverage the output of their Databricks investments directly in Analytics vNext. I started out in Databricks where I have been preparing some of my orders data and can see all of my Delta tables. Behind the scenes, all the data has been stored in either my ADLS Gen 2 account or S3. I'm going to write a query to take a look at the breakdown of revenue by customer name. I'm going to give this query a little bit of time to execute. And after some time, we can see the results show up below. We're now going to transition to the Analytics v Next Lakehouse experience, where I have started building my sales lakehouse. I've got a couple of tables here, like the product and supplier table. We can see all the data is available as folders in one lake stored in the Delta format. I would now like to leverage some of the data I prepared in Databricks directly as part of my sales lake house. In order not to duplicate any data in the process, I'm going to create a new shortcut. I'm going to start by selecting the ADLS Gen 2 option, which contains my orders data. I'll go ahead and input the URL to my storage account and click Next. The final step is to give my shortcut a name and specify the path to my orders table. Immediately, my orders fact table appears in the lake house as a shortcut folder. In navigating to the tables tab, we can see a delta table has been created for me automatically with no configuration necessary. Let's now navigate to our S3 account where we can see our customer and geography dimensions are stored. We can confirm we can see the folder with the delta parquet files. So we'll go ahead and copy the S3 URI we need to connect. Back in the lake house, we can create another shortcut, this time pointing to our S3 bucket. We can paste in the copied S3 URI. Let's add the path, just like we did with ADLS, give the shortcut a name, and the customer table appears as another shortcut in our lake house. Navigating to the warehouse mode, we can see that all the Delta tables are readily available in the warehouse UI as well. I can easily preview all the tables, irrespectively of whether they are stored in one lake, ADLS, or S3. I'll now write a SQL query that joins the Databricks ADLS data with the one lake data, with the S3 data, all in a single query that returns me my results immediately. I can easily see the revenue breakdown by customer and product with no data duplication needed. This is such an amazing thing, this one lake, but it's getting even, even better. You know, a lot of of the customers really want to know about data mesh. This is one of the top topics, hottest topics that we have in, in the world of data today. And one leg is just perfect for that because one leg has this weird behavior where in one hand, it's the most centralized system you can imagine. It's one leg for the entire organization across all your data, across all your cloud. So it's incredibly centralized, but at the same time, it's incredibly distributed in terms of data ownership. Every business function can go and create their own workspaces, produce their own data products, and then they collaborate because collaboration is just as simple as creating shortcuts and passing shortcuts between the business functions. So you can have each business function own its own domain, creating its own data products, and then you can mesh all the data together across the whole entire organization. And in fact, this concept is so strong that we have introduced directly into into Fabric, the concept of those data domains. And what you see here on the screen is the One Lake Data Hub. And then the One Lake Data Hub allows users to go and find data that, that is provided for them. So they can find what data they have, they can see the sensitivity of the data, they can see if the data is certified, that's where they work. And you can notice that the screen is blinking. And it's blinking because at the top, and the top left, we are changing the domain. And you can see that the, the user has a bunch of domains they can choose from. And those domains are just built into 
fabric, so there are domain administrators and the data can be categorized by the domains. So domains and data mesh are just built into, into, into fabric. Okay, so we're already seeing here another thing. We're already seeing that users can find data. And we're talking about every kind of users, both the data engineers, the data scientists, but also the business users. And of course, this is where we get to the third, the third pillar of Fabric, and that's the empowerment of every business user. You know, what's the point of collecting and aggregating and enriching and cleaning all of this data in one leg if business users are not going to take advantage of it? And this is where Power BI is creating an incredible bridge into into Office. Uh, we will, instead of asking the users to come to us to get the data, we bring the data to them. We bring the data to them in their favorite applications, in Teams, in Excel, in PowerPoint, in Outlook, everywhere. And it's just built in. Users don't have to know where Fabric is or what, even what Fabric is. They just come into to Teams and to the rest of the Office apps and just get the data one click away. So let's take a look at the next demo, how Fabric integrates with Office. Let's roll it. With Phoenext, we deliver data and insights one click away, everywhere decisions are made and work gets done. This starts in Microsoft Teams, where the Power BI app makes it easy to discover and collaborate with data. First, I can easily find and open all the reports I have access to right here in Teams. I have all the same powerful and easy to use slice and dice interactivity of Power BI without ever needing to leave Teams. And since Teams is all about collaboration, I can easily embed reports right inside of the channels where my team already works. For example, with this report added to the channel where our sales team collaborates, let me ask Amir a quick question about the data in the report. Immediately he can respond so we can get work done without ever needing to switch context. We can even embed interactive reports inside of meetings so that you can ensure data is on the agenda and easy to discover for everyone every time we meet. Next, in the Teams Data Hub, I can quickly find all of the Analytics Phoenix data I have been granted access to. Data is recommended for me, and for each data warehouse and lake house, I can see additional information such as endorsements, certification, and sensitivity labels. If I open a specific data set, I can find out more information about the data and quickly get started building my own analysis connected directly to the data. Best of all, with one click, I can get Excel connected directly to the data for self-service. And now in just a few clicks, I can analyze my data with pivot tables directly on top of the one lake data. Notice also the same sensitivity label applied to the VNEX data warehouse is automatically inherited by the Excel workbook. This enables organizations to give users more access to data in a trusted and secure way. Finally, discovering and connecting to any additional VNEX data in Excel is a snap because I have the same data hub built directly into Excel where I can see the same rich information about my data and get started with new analysis. Next, let's take a look at how we have made interactive reporting fully integrated into PowerPoint. With just a few clicks, I can add any of my reports directly into a PowerPoint presentation. Best of all, this works seamlessly with PowerPoint features like shapes and animations and is fully interactive in presentation mode. This is a great way to not only create interactive data storytelling as part of a presentation, but it saves a ton of time replacing the need to copy and paste charts and manually update weekly or monthly business review decks. These are just a few of the examples of how VNext makes data and insights one click away everywhere decisions are made, and we're incredibly excited to keep empowering everyone with data. Isn't it just incredible, the integration we have with Office? I can tell you that last feature that you saw there, the integration with PowerPoint, changed personally my own habits of using data. Instead of seeing those bitmaps pasted into a PowerPoint slides, I see the real data. I can see stories with the data, uh, made of, out of the data. I can see slicing and dicing live inside PowerPoint. It's just incredible. So every business user can get access to data instantly, get the insights, take action, but sometimes we just cannot wait for them to figure out that they need to take some actions. Sometimes we have to automate the actions. We have to do them in real time. And this is where we need to have system of detections and system of actions integrated into the systems of insight. And here, we're incredibly happy to announce something new. We are announcing Data Activator. And what is Data Activator? Well, Data Activator is this automated system that sits on top of one lake look at all the data artifacts that we have inside of one lake and constantly examine them to see if some rules are being met, if some action needs to be autom taken automatically. And constantly evaluating at real time and when something is found, 
we can notify a user, we can start a power automate flow, we can call the store procedure or maybe an Azure function. This is a, play, this is a system that automatically takes action whenever something's happened that needs to be taken action on. So uh, let's take a look first time. What is Data Activator? Let's run the video. In this scenario, we're a logistics company tracking data coming from sensors on our packages and trucks for things like the temperature of the packages, the humidity, or the status code of the trucks. This data is coming through event stream from IoT sensors, but it could just as easily be uh, data from a Power BI report, a data warehouse, or one lake. I'm looking at the raw events here, and I want to create triggers for when packages get too hot. So I'll start from the temperature column and create a trigger. The first thing I need to do is tell Data Activator what uniquely identifies individual packages. Now I'm looking at the raw temperature values coming from those sensor readings. We've taken a sample of five packages, but there are thousands being tracked here, and this can scale up to hundreds of thousands or even millions of objects tracked in the system. The first thing I'm going to do is group this over time into five minute increments just to help smooth out any anomalies or spikes in the data. Then I'm going to set what the condition is that I want to check for. In this case, when the value becomes greater than a certain threshold. If I type in 32, um, by default, it's going to check for every time the value goes over that amount. But I could also say I want to check when it goes over that value and stays there for a certain length of time. Or maybe when it goes over the threshold, say five times over the course of an hour. Underneath, I can see charts of what those uh, thresholds are. And also at the bottom, I can see how many times over the last few hours this trigger would have fired for all of the packages in the system. This looks a little bit noisy, so I'm going to go back and change this to 35 so that I can actually see, yeah, this is a much, much better threshold. There's fewer of these activations happening. So the last thing I want to do is say, what action do I want to take when we detect this? I can send a notification through email or Teams, but I can reach into operational systems as well using Power Automate. I can even go and activate other fabric items, for example, kicking off a data pipeline refresh or retraining a machine learning model. So I'm going to do a Teams message here, and it's filled in with my details and a, a little message about the, the action. What I'm going to do now is test this just using some of the recent bits of data that have been detected. Over here in Teams, I can see the message. I can see that it was a test. I can see the time the trigger would have fired, the package ID, and the temperature that would have caused it. So back over, I'm going to go and start that trigger. And now it's running in the background, monitoring the data and alerting accordingly. Now, when you think about monitoring all these actions that are happening in your business in real time, you can't just take an aggregated view. Data Activator is operating and alerting on the individual business objects, like one specific package that's overheating. Let's fast forward a little here. And in this monitoring view, you can see now I've added some more objects in a slightly richer model, and I'm tracking a much larger number of packages in the system here too. But I can still see what are the packages and what hotspots there might be of when triggers were firing. I can see the history down to individual instances and individual times when those triggers were activated. So this helps me iterate on those triggers, iterate on those rules, get my business into a good state and keep it there. In just a few minutes, I've been able to make a real-time operational alerting system without writing any code using Data Activator. Data Activator, it's just amazing, incredible, fun, new kind of capability that we are adding into Fabric. And, you know, we have been going through quite a lot of demos, and we've been seeing every aspect of Fabric, almost every aspect of Fabric, and notice that you never felt that you're moving from one product to another product to another product, because Fabric is just one integrated unified data platform. And that data platform is the data platform for the era of AI. So here we are, last pillar, ready to go? We're talking about AI, and AI is built everywhere into Fabric. So let's run a little bit of a sizzle video to show what we mean. Next generation AI in Microsoft Fabric empowers you to unlock the full potential of your data. With Copilot integrated into every data experience, Microsoft Fabric lets you use natural language to bring your data to life. From integrating data to writing code to finding insights and creating reports, new transformative AI experiences work alongside you every step of the way so you can stay focused on getting value from your data. Copilot helps turn your words into data flows and data pipelines so you can intelligently integrate data from anywhere. When writing code, Copilot automatically suggests code and entire functions in real time. And Copilot can guide you to create machine learning models to unlock insights in your data. Just by chatting with Copilot, 
You can visually explore your data to create stunning reports, discover insights, and summarize your data into easy to understand text narratives for sharing. With Copilot, you can turn insight into action with triggers that monitor your data and notify users. You can even create your own custom natural language experiences that combine Azure OpenAI models and your organization's data and easily publish your creations as plugins. And with your data in Fabric, Copilot provides insights and answers everywhere work gets done. Most importantly, Microsoft Cloud runs on trust, which means your data always remains your data. Bring your data into the era of AI with Microsoft Fabric. So we're really bringing AI into the heart of, of Fabric. And we're going to talk about three different scenarios where AI is going to show up. The first is, as you saw in the video, co-pilots. Co-pilots are going to be everywhere. And we are going to see some co-pilots that are helping us in every task, whether you are a data scientist, you're a data engineer, you're a DBA running a data warehouse. Co-pilots are just going to be everywhere. The second, the second one is going to be uh, where we actually going to allow you to create your own chat GPT style experience on top of your own data. And lastly, we're going to see AI as it is applied and giving you insights on top of your own data. So we're going to first take a look at how we're bringing co-pilots everywhere into the product. And we'll start with data science. So let's look, take a look at co-pilot with data science. In this demo, we will take a look at how Synapse v Next unlocks developer productivity through its integration of OpenAI large language models. As a data scientist, I'm going to start from a blank notebook. Instead of writing code, in this case, I'm going to pop open the built-in AI assistant that provides a chat-like interface for any questions I have. In my scenario, I want to build a churn model, and so I'll type that into the chat box. Instead of getting a code suggestion, the AI responds back in natural language, outlining clear steps for building a predictive churn model. For any question I ask, I can also expand the scope, which is automatically generated by the platform. In this example, since my notebook language is set to PySpark, the platform lets the AI know it should generate the code in Python. Furthermore, since I have a lakehouse attached, the scope was automatically set to the lakehouse tables, without me having to specify this. If I want to make any tweaks, I can simply edit the natural language. In my case, I will remove the clickstream table and the store table, which I know will not be relevant for my model. This helps the AI focus on the scope I care about. I can save my changes, which automatically reruns the question with the updated context. I will now take the AI suggestion and start exploring my data for the ML model. I can see the AI continues to respond to me in natural language, enabling me to have a dialogue. I can see it proposed for me to explore my customer table. And as I hover over the option to add this to my notebook, I get instant feedback and see the code that would get generated. Hitting the Add button adds the code to my notebook cell and runs it for me. I can now see a data frame display of my customer table. I can keep going through the process and see that the AI has suggested another exploration step this time to break down the churn field by customer. Hovering over it shows me the proposed code and running it as a column chart with the churn breakdown. If at any point I don't want to take the suggestion, I can simply choose not to add the exploration to my notebook. Or I can even ask a follow-up question. At any point, I can also minimize the AI Assistant tab, but I can always come back to it whenever I need to. The Synapse Phoenix experience also provides me with contextual actions without me having to type out my intention. For example, right-clicking on some of the files in my lake house, I can see some AI options, such as the ability to explore my data or generate new features. Hovering over the Generate Features option, I can see the code suggestion, which leverages Cognitive Services and Synapse ML to transform my audio logs into text and then extract out the sentiment for each row. Hitting Enter generates the code for me, and I can see the transcripts and their associated sentiment scores. Now that I have explored my data and built some features, it is time to train my model. In this case, I can have the AI also help me with code I have authored myself. Opening up the contextual menu in my cell, I can see that there are various built-in actions I can take, such as documenting my code or fixing a bug. 
As I hover over the optimize option, I can see that the AI suggests I rewrite my code to leverage the Synapse ML library, which uses Spark to distribute the model training. Just like before, I can hit enter to accept the suggestion and see the code rewritten in the cell. In summary, the Synapse Phoenix platform provides me with many AI-assisted capabilities that increase my productivity as a developer. So you're seeing how copilots can increase your productivity insanely uh, when you just use them inside Fabric. But you may also want something else. You don't want just us to provide our own copilots. You want to have your own copilot plugin to run on top of your own data that even your users inside M365, inside Teams, can actually use it as they're using business chat of M365. So let's see how we allow you inside Fabric to create those Copilot plugins directly on top of your own data. Let's roll the video. In this demo, we'll take a look at how Fabric accelerates the time to value of building data-aware Copilot plugins based on Azure OpenAI. I start out in my sales lake house, which contains all my organizational revenue data. I want to expose this data through a Copilot experience to my sales team. To get started, I can choose to add a new Copilot plugin directly from the context of my lake house. All I have to do is give it a name, and I'm navigated to the artifact experience. The Copilot plugin is going to take a second to prep all the data in my sales lake house for my use. I immediately land in a consumption experience and can see all the relevant business data I can interact with on the left-hand side. If I ask a question about revenue for Q1, the plugin automatically knows to look in the revenue table of the sales slave house for an answer. I can also easily tweak the data context. In addition to the sales lake house, I would also like my copilot to know about the finance warehouse and the customer reviews data set from my workspace. I can simply add those to the context. I also want to enrich the data context with data from another warehouse. The Fabric Data Hub enables me to easily discover all the data assets I have access to and I can add the online purchase warehouse to my data context. Now that I am done configuring my data, I can immediately start asking more questions. For example, about my newly added online purchases. And the Copilot plugin is ready to help, letting me know 12% of online purchases in APAC were for Contoso products. Since data security is a key pillar in Fabric, security rules are automatically carried through to the plugin. For example, if I ask a question about North America purchases, which I don't have access to, the plugin will respect the security boundaries and will not surface the data to me. At any point, I can also launch the full-blown editor experience that lets me set up more complex workflows, for example, varying the tone and adding pre-processing steps. Since the Copilot plugin is just another artifact in my workspace, it benefits from all the out-of-the-box goodness that comes with Fabric. For example, we can see that the plugin has a highly confidential sensitivity label, indicating it is dealing with very sensitive data. With zero setup, this label was automatically inherited from the highly sensitive finance warehouse, which the plugin is using for data context. I can also navigate to the lineage view and see all the data that my Copilot plugin is leveraging as context, even the data sources that are outside of my workspace. This makes it easy to govern the plugin and understand impact on downstream and upstream artifacts. Now that my Data Aware plugin is ready, complete with data security and sensitivity policies, I can share the plugin with others inside Fabric. I can simply hit the Share button and choose the users I want to give access to without needing to do any deployments. However, I would also like to integrate my plugin into my M365 business chat to be leveraged by my sales team. I can choose from a variety of integration options, including M365. In just a few seconds, we can see that the plugin was successfully imported as a new skill and can now be leveraged in my business chat. Navigating to Teams, my sales team can now easily interact with Copilot at M365 and ask about Fabric data in addition to all their other relevant business data, ranging from emails to calendars to documents. As a salesperson preparing for a customer meeting, I can ask Copilot about the latest developments with my customer Northwind. I'm presented with a great summary of the latest activities, including the fact that Mona sent an email to the customer last week asking about their contract renewal, and also the PowerPoint deck that Jeff presented in the last customer meeting. Thanks to the new Fabric plugin, I can also see that revenue from Northwind has increased to 250K in the last three months, all inside the same chat response. Asking a follow-up question about where the increase came from prompts another response, 
letting me know that revenue grew by 150k in EMEA and another 100k in APAC. Thanks to built-in citations, I can see all the information came from Fabric and specifically the sales lighthouse. To conclude, the Fabric experience makes it seamless to build secure, data-aware Copilot plugins, which can be embedded into business applications and consumed across the entire Microsoft ecosystem. So you've seen how the AI helps us more, be more productive. You've seen how the AI allows us to have chats on top of our own data. And you've seen an amazing set of demos until now. You might be wondering, what else can he show? Well, get ready to be really amazed because you're going to see how the AI helps us drive new insight inside Power BI. And this is just pure magic. Let's roll the video. Let's take a look at how Copilot in Power BI is empowering everyone to quickly find and share insights. For example, Sam, an HR analyst who is constantly handling requests for my management to do analysis and provide answers. It can take hours and even days to respond with new reports. Now, with Copilot and Power BI, I can simply describe the report I want to build and get insights in seconds. Maybe we need to break down some of our employee data to understand demographics and hiring trends. I just describe what I need, and Copilot will automatically analyze my data and create a new report based on my needs. Immediately, I have a beautiful Power BI report that is fully interactive, and I can start slicing and dicing my data to explore deeper. Copilot added the charts and slicers I asked for, but also conveniently gives me options to adjust the output to get just what I'm looking for. For example, let's switch to ask for metrics and trends in a slightly different layout. Automatically, Copilot updates the report. Let's go ahead and keep this report page. But it goes much further. I can also ask analysis questions, such as why is our attrition rate going up? Copilot responds by adding a new page to my report and uses Power BI's built-in advanced analysis capabilities for finding key influencers for variables in my data. In addition to giving me a summary of insight about different employee types having different attrition rates, I can easily explore Power BI's key influencer visual to see what's driving the biggest impact to our attrition rate. I can even automatically see the most significant segments in my data just by clicking. Now let's go back to the first page and finish up our new report. I'm going to ask Copilot to make it look like our existing exec dashboard, and instantly it's applied the same formatting and style and adjusted the layout to match. Best of all, I can still interact directly with the Power BI report that the Copilot has created for me. So for example, if I wanted to manually change this bar chart to a tree map on my own, it's easy to do so with just a few clicks. Let's add employee functional area, and now I can filter by that new field. Finally, to make the report even easier for my team to understand, I'm going to ask Copilot to add a rich text description of my data right inside the report. This narrative summary is fully dynamic, and not only does Copilot highlight interesting insights from my data, but it provides citations from where in the report the data was taken. This summary will update every time the data is refreshed or people filter the report with new insights based on the data. And just like that, in seconds, I've created a report that would have taken hours or days to do manually. Copilot, built on top of Azure OpenAI, is truly revolutionizing how we empower everyone to find and share insights. Simply stunning. Okay, we are done with the tour, the visual tour of, of Fabric. And I'm really happy to hand it over back to Arun, who will take you through the real important stuff of how does Fabric show up in market, how we sell it, and everything else. That sounds great, Amir. Um, so, hey folks, what do you guys think? You know, isn't that just absolutely insane? I've personally presented Fabric to more than 100 customers um, you know, over and over again over the last year. I know Amir's probably done the same, and the excitement is off the charts. And hopefully you have a clear appreciation of why. I know that everybody wants to know when it's available. Here's exactly what's going on. So with the launch of Fabric, remember Power BI is still a part of Fabric. Power BI continues to be generally available, so there's no change to Power BI. Even uh, you know, pretty much all the Power BI tenants get upgraded into Fabric, and Power BI continues to be GA. At Build, we're announcing the public preview of all of these products. The new data factory experience, data engineering experience, data science experience, data warehousing experience, real-time uh, analytics, the co-pilot for DAX, and One Lake itself, all available in public preview, no waiting required. You can literally sign up uh, on the website and get started within seconds. And finally, um, there's a couple of products that are in private preview. So Data Activator is in private preview, as well as the Fabric Copilot experiences that you saw, saw are also in private preview. And the reason we want to go through the private preview is because we deal with data. And customers really want to make sure that the data is trustworthy. So we need to make sure that customers get their hands on these uh, Copilot beds and feel great about it before we make them available for public preview. So that's the availability. Finally, 
So this is what we have, folks, uh, a complete analytics platform delivered as SaaS with seven core workloads all sitting on top of one lake. So hopefully you're as excited about it as I am. So that's it, folks. This is what we're doing with Microsoft Fabric. Hopefully this is exciting for you. Hopefully you're as excited as we are. We can't wait to get this in the hands of customers. Adam, that was an amazing oh. session by Arun and Amir. And you know, what struck me the most, which just grabbed my attention was when Arun said, the world is awash with data. I don't think wait, I've ever- Wait, wait, what does that mean, awash with data? It's everywhere, it's right? Everywhere. It's so important, oh. all this data. And then Amir just took us through those wonderful and amazing demos that was just getting me so excited. I just couldn't wait for the next one and the next one. And they, there were a lot of them too. Yeah, there were it a lot great. of them, right? He left me wanting more, Adam. You did. All right. Patrick, I'm glad that you said you wanted more. Yeah, I do. Up next, Patrick and Arun are gonna join us again to talk about transforming productivity with AI experience for analytics. Let's learn about Copilot. Stay tuned. All right, folks, I'm so excited to be here. We have some massive announcements today, so let's get started. We know that in today's world, it's literally awash with data. Not just data from our transactional systems of record, but data from the world around us. The devices we use, the applications we build, human interactions, and so much more. All of us are dealing with this challenge. How do we translate our data into a competitive advantage? Because we recognize that in today's world, our competitive advantage comes from how we leverage data. As a result, the good news is that there's been a ton of innovation. Over the last decade, there's been a lot of exciting innovations in the data and AI space. And it seems like not a day or week goes by without a new announcement about an exciting product or technology that is now available or now improved. The bad news, however, is all of this innovation results in a wall of complexity that is facing most customers today. This slide, put together by Firstmark Venture Capital, is a great representation Every icon on the slide is a product or open source technology available to customers. And this has created an enormous burden on customers to figure out all of this technology, acquire the expertise, wire it together, manage and run it. In a tough environment, customers are tired of paying the integration tax. As a result, here's what we consistently hear from customers. Now, this is a real quote from a chief data officer that we work closely with, and it broadly represents the sentiment we hear from most of our customers. Please simplify. I want to be the chief data officer, not the chief integration officer. Meanwhile, we're going through a massive transition. The era of AI is upon us. This is a huge platform shift that will have profound implications on every aspect of work in general, and in particular, how we work with data. Two things come to mind. Your AI is only as good as it, your data, which makes it all the more important to get your data right. And now with the power of large language models, such as Azure OpenAI, you can help simplify and accelerate developer productivity. That is, AI can help you make sense of the complexity. So today, we are really excited to announce Microsoft Fabric. You can think about Fabric as the data platform for the age of AI. So what exactly is Fabric? You can think of Fabric simply as Office, but for your data. Just like Office 365 has Word for document authoring, PowerPoint for presentations, Excel for spreadsheets, etc., in Microsoft Fabric, you have seven core workloads. Each of the workloads are purpose-built for a specific persona and a specific task. The workloads include the next versions of our existing products, like Data Factory, Synapse Analytics, and Power BI. And it also includes a couple of brand new products, Data Activated to help customers go from insights to action, and One Lake, which is a SaaS version of the data lake itself. You can think of One Lake as pretty much OneDrive, but for your data. All of the workloads natively store their data in One Lake, just like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel store their data in OneDrive. All of Fabric runs on an intelligent data foundation that unifies all of these workloads together into one cohesive experience, just like Office. Across Fabric, there are four major areas of investment. The first is a complete analytics platform that provides all of the workloads needed to go from the data lake all the way to the business user. Fabric is delivered as software as a service where everything is automatically integrated and automatically optimized. Lots of capabilities around security and governance so we all can sleep better at night. Second, Fabric follows a lake-centric and open architecture. We talked about one lake as a SaaS data lake for the entire organization, one Lake not only provides storage out of the box, but also acts as a virtualization layer, bringing all your data across Azure Data Lake Gen 2, 
AWS S3 and Google Storage into a single unified namespace. Across Fabric, we're embracing open data formats. So if you build a data warehouse with Synapse or any of the major data warehousing products today, everyone puts the data in their own proprietary format. This not only locks customers in, but also causes data to be duplicated over and over again as data is re-ingested, which drives costs and complexity. With Fabric, Microsoft is moving to a completely open format where the native format of all the workloads in Fabric, Synapse, Power BI, real-time analytics, is based on the completely open Parquet and Delta Lake. Fabric is open at every tier. So if you want to use all of the workloads, you get the best of Fabric. But if you want to mix and match Fabric workloads with other industry products, it works really well. Third, we want to ensure that all of the data in one lake is natively integrated into all of Office 365. And here, Power BI is that bridge. The data is integrated into Excel, into Teams, into SharePoint, into PowerPoint. That means your business users can easily put data to work because the data shows up in the tools that they use every single day. And finally, Azure OpenAI is integrated throughout all of Fabric. Each one of the workloads has a built-in co-pilot that is working side-by-side -side with a developer accelerating productivity. It's really easy to leverage generative AI on your data in a secure and compliant way just in a couple of clicks. So I'm really excited to announce Copilot in Microsoft Fabric, now in private preview. So let's take a look at a video that shows you what Copilot is all about. Next generation AI in Microsoft Fabric empowers you to unlock the full potential of your data. With Copilot integrated into every data experience, Microsoft Fabric lets you use natural language to bring your data to life. From integrating data, to writing code, to finding insights and creating reports, new transformative AI experiences work alongside you every step of the way, so you can stay focused on getting value from your data. Copilot helps turn your words into data flows and data pipelines, so you can intelligently integrate data from anywhere. When writing code, Copilot automatically suggests code and entire functions in real time. And Copilot can guide you to create machine learning models to unlock Unlock insights in your data. Just by chatting with Copilot, you can visually explore your data to create stunning reports, discover insights, and summarize your data into easy to understand text narratives for sharing. With Copilot, you can turn insight into action with triggers that monitor your data and notify users. You can even create your own custom natural language experiences that combine Azure OpenAI models and your organization's data and easily publish your creations as plugins. And with your data in Fabric, Copilot provides insights and answers everywhere work gets done. Most importantly, Microsoft Cloud runs on trust, which means your data always remains your data. Bring your data into the era of AI with Microsoft Fabric. Hopefully that was really exciting. Now I'm going to transition to Patrick Baumgartner, who's going to go much deeper into Copilot and show you exactly what we're doing. Over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Arun. Microsoft Fabric is built from the ground up to enable you to leverage next generation AI with your data. This starts with Copilot being built into every Fabric experience to accelerate your productivity and help you unlock insights with your data. We're also enabling you to seamlessly tap into Azure OpenAI models to create AI plugins to deliver custom AI experiences on your data. Finally, Fabric delivers AI-powered insights that not only help you understand your business, but also help you bridge the gap between insights and action. Most importantly, the Microsoft Cloud runs on trust. Trust has been a fundamental promise built into the Microsoft Cloud since the very beginning. Data is the fuel that powers AI technology, and you need to trust what your technology partners are doing with your data. There are three fundamental promises we make with the Microsoft Cloud. First, your data is your data. It is not our data. That means it is yours to own and control. Second, your data is not used to train or enrich the foundational AI models used by others, only for your organization's benefit for your data and your processes. Third, your data is protected at every step by the most comprehensive enterprise compliance and security controls in the industry. First, I want to share with you how we're integrating Copilot into every Fabric experience to help you accelerate your productivity. Because Copilot is integrated everywhere in Fabric, you have an intelligent assistant transforming how you work. Copilot will work alongside you from data integration to data engineering and data science through to data warehousing and all the way to your reporting and analytics solutions. 
With Copilot Accelerated Solutions, we can move away from product-specific tools that require niche expertise to focus on turning your ideas into reality. This lets us move from needing to master complex tools to working with a creative assistant, from being siloed in specific products to working in a cross-cutting experience, and from being focused on manually building artifacts to refining automatically generated content. Most importantly, with Copilot, you're always in control. You decide what to keep, modify, or discard. To see this in action, we're going to take a look at Copilot working in each fabric experience. Let's start by taking a sneak peek at Copilot in Data Factory. With Copilot in Data Factory, you can effortlessly create complex pipelines using natural language. You can even use Copilot to get helpful suggestions for the next steps in preparing your data. To start, you'll notice that Copilot shows up on the landing page. And right away, I can give Copilot a description of the tasks I want to achieve. Let's ask Copilot to copy data from SQL to a container in Blob Storage. It smartly provides a list of connections, so I don't have to remember the exact name of the connection I want to use. Let's choose Contoso Sales SQL in the Finance Blob Storage. I can also request Copilot to perform additional activities to help us build a metadata-driven pipeline, such as looking up the country name column from the country metadata table to obtain the source tables based on the listed countries. This command will immediately create activities on the canvas, including lookup for each and a well-parameterized copy activity. I could also regenerate the pipeline for an alternative one, allowing me to choose the best generated pipeline for my use case. To regenerate, let's click on the Regenerate button, and Copilot has regenerated the alternative pipeline with the same input that was passed earlier, giving me more options to work from. Additionally, Copilot gives me IntelliSense for connection selection and suggest the next steps. In this case, let's click on Run this pipeline. And within seconds, the pipeline has executed successfully. As you can see, Copilot creates a completely new paradigm for doing data prep and transformation. And not only that, we're also integrating new transformation steps to directly leverage models from Azure OpenAI within your data pipelines. Next, Let's take a look at how Copilot is being integrated into data engineering workloads to see how with just natural language, we can model and transform data. As a data scientist, I've been given the assignment to explore relevant data and identify trends that financial analysts can use to make better decisions. First, I'd like to explore the data so I can understand it. I'll start by opening up a notebook inside the Fabric Data Science homepage. Instead of starting from a blank canvas, let's use Copilot to get some suggestions on how to segment my data. Copilot helps me create a Pandas data frame query, pulling in relevant data about the company's sales history and profitability from 2022. The Python code looks great, so I have Copilot inserted into the notebook as a new cell, and I execute it. Immediately, I get a data frame with lots of historical sales information across multiple industries. It's a good start, but I want to explore the data further. To do this, I open up a new code cell. I can use Copilot right inside the cell to help me generate code. I'm going to type percent percent and use IPython magic commands powered by Azure OpenAI. I can ask to break out the data frame by industry and group similar industries together by category through natural language. And just like that, I receive data about the industries with the highest profit margins. Now I'd like to perform some K nearest neighbors analysis on the data. I'm going to add another code cell. Let's add to the start of the code I want to write. And immediately you can see Copilot auto completed the rest of the code. I can just hit tab to accept it. But when I try to run it, you'll see I get an error. Not from the auto-completed Copilot code, but because I didn't import the mflow package. Fortunately, I can just click Fix with Copilot, and Copilot will update my code and correctly import mflow at the top of the cell. And now when I execute, I see my data visualized. As you've seen, Copilot in Notebooks helps boost the productivity and upskill data engineers and data scientists. And more than just helping users write code faster, Copilot can help users understand how code is working and even work with users to understand how best to analyze their data. Now, let's take a look at some of the ways Copilot is being integrated into Synapse Data Warehousing. I'm going to start with a new query editor to explore my sales data. To get started, I click the Copilot button on the top ribbon. I can now simply ask a quick question to Copilot. Show me my top customers by sales over the last 24 months. Copilot analyzes my question and outputs a SQL query which shows me the query I need to get the answer I'm looking for. Let's have Copilot insert the query into the editor and run it. And just like that, I have my query and the data result. But we can go way further. 
Now I'd like to share this answer with my colleagues, but add to it. I want to show my top 10 customers in any given month. So let's ask Copilot, help me turn the last query into a table value function where I can parameterize the time frame by month, but for my top 10 customers, and then run the function. Not only does Copilot know to start from the previous query, but it'll also change it to meet my new needs. For me personally, whose SQL is a little rusty, this lets me get started working with data much more quickly and for much more advanced queries. Here, Copilot updated the SQL, wrapped it in a table valued function, parameterized it, and created the script to execute it. I just click on insert, and all I need to do is execute the script to see the results. Again, we've seen how Copilot helps users work faster and smarter. Even more exciting, I'm happy to share that we're also adding capabilities to accelerate data warehousing migrations using Copilot, which will be an incredible way to accelerate modernization of your data platform. We're also bringing Copilot into Data Activator so you can monitor and drive action as your data changes using Copilot. Let's take a look. Here I am in Data Activator. I have data here streaming in from Event Hub, and I can see the events arrive in real time. The data is about packages that we're monitoring. I can see shippers, recipients, how long they've been in transit, and things like temperature and humidity. Let's use Copilot to set up a trigger that sends an email whenever the package temperature crosses above 105 degrees, taken as an average over the course of the last hour. Just by describing this in natural language, Copilot creates the object with all the steps needed in Data Activator. I can see it sending an email, review that it has the temperature correct, and that it's doing an average over an hour. And I can validate it with the test. So let's switch over and see that it's generated the email correctly, which it has. And now I can go back and start the trigger, so it's going to be monitoring data in the background. This is a great example of a case where setting up a rule is easy in natural language with Copilot, but doing so manually is very challenging. With Data Activator, you can connect insights as they happen with systems of action, and Copilot makes setting up these triggers as easy as describing rules in natural language. Next, I want to talk about how we're bringing the power of next generation AI directly to your data. Microsoft Fabric provides easy built-in access to leading AI models to enhance your data and applications. Just by bringing your data into one lake, you're set up to start using generative AI with your data. To give you an idea of how this works, let's take a look at some upcoming capabilities to create AI plugins in Fabric for your data. Here I am in a Fabric workspace where I want to show you how I can easily create an AI plugin for my data. Let's say I want to make it easy for my colleagues on the sales team to ask questions about our sales data. To do this, I'm going to create a new AI plugin using our sales warehouse data. I provide a name and I'm on my way. I have a few options for the type of plugin I want to create to help me get started quickly. Let's pick the first option to answer natural language questions about my data. Immediately, I'm dropped into a preview mode where I can start asking questions about the data in the sales warehouse. I can ask a question in natural language, and through the power of generative AI, a SQL query is generated for me behind the scenes that answers my question. Fabric automatically provides the AI model with the context it needs, such as the schema, so it can generate effective responses. I want to make some changes to the base functionality, so let's configure the plugin. Here I'm shown an overview of how the plugin is put together. Adding or removing specific tables from the plugin is as easy as selecting a checkbox and I can configure each component of the plugin as well. For instance, here I can adjust the prompting that gets sent to the model alongside the internal meta prompts. I can also get a preview of the response from the large language model, which is useful for debugging. It is easy to publish the plugin in many formats. I want my sales team to be able to access this data in Teams through Microsoft 365 Business Chat, so I'll select the M365 Copilot option. There's a few more steps to configure from the Business Chat side, but I'm going to just jump ahead and start a conversation with my Copilot in Teams. Here I can ask my question, and now Copilot can get answers directly from the sales warehouse. And if I switch back to my Fabric workspace, we can see the lineage view for the plugin. And not only that, the plugin is seamlessly integrated with my other data artifacts in Fabric. This includes sensitivity labels being automatically inherited, as well as data access and security, including row level security being built in. AI plugins, such as the example of enabling Q&A for your data, will let you deliver unique value and experiences for your data. As you can see, we're working to make creating AI plugins simple through low-code experiences built into Fabric. We're also working to make it easy to create AI experiences for all your data in Azure. We're excited to announce vector index support for Cosmos DB for MongoDB, Cosmos DB for Postgres, and for Azure Postgres Flexible Server. 
Vector indexing is foundational for enabling Copilot and large language models to retrieve relevant data from your databases efficiently, so it can reason over it. Now this capability is built in. Further, we're also excited to announce an Azure OpenAI plugin for Cosmos DB and for Azure Postgres. This enables AI models to access your data using vectors, making it much easier to create AI plugins. Finally, there is one last new capability I want to share with you. And that's how we're integrating next-generation AI to help you discover insights in Power BI. Power BI's journey with large language models actually started last year when we released capabilities to generate DAX calculations for natural language. Suggestions for DAX enables analysts to create calculations, such as rolling averages, just by describing what they're looking for in natural language. It's a huge help in tapping into the incredibly powerful DAX language in Power BI. But this was just the beginning. And now we have a ton of exciting new co-pilot features in Power BI that I'm excited to share with you. Let's take a look. Introducing the next generation of AI in Microsoft Power BI. Copilot in Power BI empowers your people to unlock the full potential of your data and move from data to insights faster. Now, with Copilot in Power BI, you can use natural language to bring your data to life. Simply describe the visuals and insights you're looking for, and next generation AI will create your report and help you refine it. You can then dig into this data further by asking a question, and Copilot will find the best answer. Not only does Copilot help you visualize your data, but it taps into Power BI's advanced analysis capabilities to help you find key influencers and outliers and create forecasts. Copilot can summarize your data into easy to understand text narratives that help others quickly get important and relevant insights. And for analysts who are creating calculations and modeling data, you can simply describe what you want and the code is automatically generated. With Copilot in Power BI, turning data into impact has never been easier. As you can see, Copilot in Power BI transforms how you work with data to find insights. It lets you focus on the analysis needed by your business and not on needing to become an expert in calculation languages or report design. Let's take a look at some demos of Copilot in Power BI, starting with improvements on how you can create calculations using natural language. Power BI is enhancing its Copilot capabilities for authoring calculations in DAX. Let's say I wanted to create a calculation for profit margin in my model. Now, just by adding a comment, the new DAX Copilot understands both my model schema and common business definitions to correctly create the calculation. Once calculations are created, users can then quickly and easily add them inside their Power BI reports. The Copilot works both for basic measures like profit margin, but also complex ones like rolling averages or adding filters based on records in my database. And because of the amazing generative capabilities of Azure OpenAI, I can even do things like authoring comments in German, and the Copilot does not miss a beat generating DAX calculations based on my requests. Creating calculations in the context of a company-specific business model is a huge productivity boost for analysts and it'll help more users ramp up on the incredibly powerful DAX language. Finally, let's look at how Copilot can work with you to create reports from scratch, find insights, and answer questions about your data. Let's say, for example, I'm an HR analyst who is constantly handling requests from my management to do analysis and provide answers. It can take hours and even days to respond with new reports. Now, with Copilot and Power BI, I can simply describe the report I want to build and get insights in seconds. Maybe we need to break down some of our employee data to understand demographics and hiring trends. I just describe what I need, and Copilot will automatically analyze my data and create a new report based on my needs. Immediately, I have a beautiful Power BI report that is fully interactive, and I can start slicing and dicing my data to explore deeper. Copilot added the charts and slicers I asked for, but also conveniently gives me options to adjust the output to get just what I'm looking for. For example, let's switch to ask for metrics and trends in a slightly different layout. Automatically, Copilot updates the report. Let's go ahead and keep this report page. But it goes much further. I can also ask analysis questions, such as why is our attrition rate going up? Copilot responds by adding a new page to my report and uses Power BI's built-in advanced analysis capabilities for finding key influencers for variables in my data. In addition to giving me a summary of an insight about different employee types having different attrition rates, I can easily explore Power BI's key influencer visual to see what's driving the biggest impact to our attrition rate. I can even automatically see the most significant segments in my data just by clicking. Now let's go back to the first page and finish up our new report. I'm going to ask Copilot to make it look like our existing exec dashboard 
and instantly it's applied the same formatting and style and adjusted the layout to match. Best of all, I can still interact directly with the Power BI report Copilot has created. So for example, if I wanted to manually change this bar chart to a tree map on my own, it's easy to do so with just a few clicks. Let's add employee functional area, and now I can filter by the new field. Finally, to make the report even easier for my team to understand, I'm going to ask Copilot to add a rich text description of my data right inside the report. This narrative summary is fully dynamic, and not only does Copilot highlight interesting insights from my data, but it provides citations from where in the report the data was taken. This summary will update every time the data is refreshed or people filter the report with new insights based on the data. And just like that, in seconds, I've created a report that would have taken hours or days to do manually. We're incredibly excited about the future of data and analytics. With the announcements of Microsoft Fabric and the new Copilot experiences in Fabric that we shared today, we're transforming how everyone gets insight from data. I hope you'll take the time to get started with Microsoft Fabric, and you can also try out the public preview of using Copilot to create DAX in Power BI. And if you're interested, you can sign up for the private preview of Copilot in Microsoft Fabric. Thank you. Wow. Amazing stuff from Patrick Baumgartner. All the Copilot. Copilot, all the things. All the AI. I'm so excited about this. It's going to make me so efficient. It's going to make you all so efficient with everything we do with data. It's, it's amazing, though, the key points of where Copilot's available in Microsoft Fabric. So where the individual is actually using certain things. So when I think about Lake House or data warehousing or Power BI reports, like Copilot is where I need it to be. It's in all the things. But, but before we get started with Copilot, we have to address some things, Adam. Oh. Oh. We need to address where all this data is Where's going. Where's the data? Where's the data going? Oh. Right? And so we're going to talk about this new thing called the One Lake. Ooh, one Lake. Yeah, the One Lake. You know what the One Lake is going to do for us? It's going to break down those data silos. So yeah. instead of having those little corporate data buckets that everybody want to put their stuff in, those little silos, we're going to use the One Lake, and now it's going to be available across the entire organization. Right, Patrick, enough all this talking. Let's head over to Josh and Addy where they will go through and talk about the One Lake experience. Hi, I'm Josh Kaplan, and I lead product management for One Lake at Microsoft. One Lake comes as part of Microsoft Fabric. Fabric accelerates data potential for the era of AI. Fabric provides a unified intelligent data foundation for all analytic workloads and integrates Power BI, Data Factory, and the next generation of Synapse to offer customers a price, performant, and easy to manage modern analytics solution. As you will see, every analytics workload works seamlessly with OneLake to minimize data management time and effort by eliminating data movement and duplication. When we started working on Fabric, we spoke to a lot of customers to better understand the investments that they were making in, in data lake strategies. What we found is that customers had these visions of these pristine data lakes, which provided one place for an organization to land all their data. Having it together in one place would break down data silos, making it easier to blend and analyze together. Having everything in one place would simplify the management, governance, and discovery of the data, making it possible for all users and applications to access the data they need. Getting to this reality, however, was difficult. Analytics with data lakes was a lot like file sharing prior to OneDrive. If you remember back to those days, you would buy servers, set up folders, put ACLs on those folders, and you would use that to share files. It worked, but you had to build the file sharing solution. Services like OneDrive came along, changing the game by giving you a SaaS service for sharing files. Instead of buying data lakes, you buy storage. You build your own data lake solutions on top of that. This isn't easy. Building one pristine data lake has its own challenges, which require a lot of coordination through a central team. The popular data mesh pattern pushes business groups to manage their own lakes so that they can work independently. But this comes with a lot of overhead. No matter which path you take, the results almost always end up being the same. You end up with multiple siloed lakes for different business domains. Then you need to build solutions for breaking down those silos. This usually involves moving the data. Even after moving the data, most users and applications are not able to access the data lakes directly. So you build data marts, data warehouses, cubes, Power BI data sets, all to serve the data. And these don't just reference the data in the lake, these are copies of the data. And sometimes they're copies of the copies of the data. Before you know it, you have data flying all over the place. However, you build complex solutions to manage all these activities because of the value you're able to get from the data itself. OneLake aims to provide you a data lake as a service without you needing to build it yourself. For years, you've had OneDrive for all your documents. Now, you have OneLake for all your data. 
Let's look at how one lake does this by going through these concepts. Starting with one lake itself, one lake provides you a single data lake for your entire organization. For every fabric tenant, you'll always have exactly one one lake, never two, never zero. There is no infrastructure to manage or set up. The concept of a tenant is a unique benefit of a SaaS service. It allows us to automatically provide a single management and governance boundary for the entire organization, which is ultimately under the control of a tenant admin. The admin sets the initial boundary, and any data which lands in one lake will automatically take part in out-of-the-box data governance, such as lineage, data protection, certification, catalog integration, and much more. All data is ultimately under the control of a tenant admin. However, it is important that different business groups can work independently without going through a central gatekeeper. Just as an office user does not need to, go, does not need to coordinate with their admin to create a new Teams channel or a SharePoint site, one lake enables similar distributed ownership through workspaces. Different workspaces allow different parts of the organization to work independently while still contributing to the same data lake. Each workspace can have its own administrator, access control, region, and capacity for billing. Creating a workspace is very lightweight. It inherits the rules set by the tenant admin, so there is no need to re-implement the same governance or spend time trying to get different resources to talk to each other. Workspace admins can further control access to the data within their workspace as needed. You might be thinking that your organization can't have just one lake because you are in multiple countries and you have requirements that data must reside within those countries. One lake covers this by spanning the globe as well. Different workspaces can reside in different regions. This means that any data stored in those workspaces will also reside in those countries. One lake is built on top of Azure Data Lake Storage N2. Under the covers, it will use multiple storage accounts in different regions. However, one lake will virtualize them into one logical lake. Let's zoom into a couple of these workspaces and see how the data is being stored. In one lake, all data comes as part of a fabric data item. And fabric data items are pre-wired to store their data in one lake using open file formats. What is a fabric data item? If you currently use Power BI, you will already be familiar with one data item, Power BI data sets. Fabric brings several new data items, each with a tailored experience for different personas. For example, a fully transactional data warehouse for T-SQL developers, and a lake house for data engineers. The lake house provides the most lake-like experience for anyone used to working with storage today, but it also provides so much more. No matter which item you start with, they will all store their data in one lake, similar to how Word, Excel, and PowerPoint save documents in OneDrive. When looking at one lake directly, you're not going to see data items and workspaces. You will see files and folders, just like you would in current data lake solutions. Any tabular data will be stored in Delta Lake Parquet format. We are not creating any new proprietary file formats for Fabric. Proprietary formats create data silos. Even our SQL Data Warehouse will natively store its data in Delta Lake Parquet format. While Fabric data items will standardize on Delta Parquet for tabular data, one Lake is still a data lake built on top of ADLS Gen 2. It will support any file type, structured or unstructured. How the data is stored is important because One Lake is not just a Fabric data lake or a Microsoft data lake. It is an open data lake. In addition to being built on ADLS Gen 2, One Lake supports the same ADLS Gen 2 DFS APIs and SDKs, making it compatible with existing ADLS applications, including Azure Databricks and Azure HD Insights. Tenants will appear as one big storage account with different workspaces appearing as different containers and data organized into folders. The underlying physical storage is virtualized away. One lake ensures proper scale and performance. If you've worked with ADLS APIs, addressing data in one lake should look familiar. There is no need to remember storage accounts as there is just one virtual account for all one lake. Workspace name goes into the container portion of the URL while the item name and type are all part of the path to the data. Let's look at a demo of one lake in action. In Fabric, I'm able to see all my existing workspaces, and I can even create new ones if I need to, since creating workspaces is very lightweight. I'll select an existing one. In this workspace, I can see different Fabric data items, including this data warehouse. Opening the data warehouse, I can see that I have one table in one schema. Now since one lake is the OneDrive for data, just like OneDrive, I can explore all my workspaces and all my data directly in Windows. Here I can see the data warehouse that I'm in right now. Opening that up, 
I can see a folder for tables, the schema, and one table inside. I'll go ahead and create a new table using T-SQL and load a row of data into it. Refreshing the folder in Windows shows the new table. And opening that new table shows the delta log and the parquet data inside. Even though I created the table using T-SQL, all the data is stored in open formats in one lake. The lake house is the most lake-like data item in Fabric. While the data warehouse is fully transactional, which allows me to load data using T-SQL, the lake house lets me load data using any means, and it also lets me load semi-structured and unstructured data. In this case, I have some images I want to train an ML model with. These images are sitting locally on my machine. Let's go into the lake house I just created. In the files section, I simply copy and paste the images from my machine into the lake house. In seconds, I see these files now available in one lake in my lake house. Now I've built a data pipeline in Databricks that I've been using to build my data lake. I want to have this data stored within my new lake house. Through one lake's open access, I can do this very easily. I find the path to my lake house by clicking on it and hitting properties. I copy the ABFS path from the properties window. Going into my Databricks notebook, I can see that I'm reading data from a storage account, doing some transformations, then writing the data back to another storage account in the Delta Lake format. I'll just replace the path here to my storage account with the path to my lake house. I can see that the lake house path includes the workspace name, as well as the lake house name and its data item type. I'll just run the notebook, and that's it. All I had to do to adjust this notebook to load data to a fabric lake house was change that path. Going back to the lake house, I see these tables now available with data inside them. I can continue with my data journey. With one lake, there are no data silos. Data is stored in open formats, and with open access, I can work with my data using familiar tools and services. Let's bring in Adi to talk about how OneLake more efficiently enables the data mesh pattern. Thank you, Josh. As we've seen, OneLake allows breaking down data silos within your organization, and it actually enables defining and implementing a data mesh pattern. But now we're taking it one step further. We're introducing domains as an integral part of the experience to provide a true data mesh as a service. So what is a domain? A domain is a way to logically group together data within the organization that is relevant to a specific area or field. For instance, imagine defining a domain for your marketing data, for your finance data, and for your sales data. Those domains are defined with domain admins who can then add description and configure that domain forward, and also with contributors both of which can associate workspaces to that domain, thus allowing grouping together relevant data to your business. In addition, true federated governance can be achieved by delegating settings from the tenant level to the domain level, thus allowing domain admins to achieve more granular control over their business area. Business optimized consumption is provided as well, as domains simplify discovery and consumption of data across the organization, as users can filter per domain and discover data in that way. And last, data swamps can be avoided by endorsing certain data within a domain and tagging that data as certified as or promoted, thus surfacing that data to the top and encouraging reuse. Let's see a live demo of these capabilities, showing how to define domains, how to associate workspaces to them, how to achieve federated governance and business optimized consumption. Domains in OneLake allow easily following a data mesh pattern, structuring your data according to business needs, allowing federated governance and business optimized consumption. Here's how it works. To define domains, let's open the admin portal. A new entry has been added for domains. Let's enter it. In the domain screen, I can see all the domains defined for this organization, their administrators, and I can edit or delete them. Now, let's see how we create a new domain. In this case, I'll create a finance domain for our finance department. I'll add name and description. 
I'll select an image for this domain and brand it to later help users understand the context they are in across their data consumption experiences. I'll define domain admins, allowing more granular controls from tenant to domain level. And I can also define domain contributors, meaning who can associate workspaces to this domain. It can be set to the entire organization, limited to specific security groups, or controlled only by tenant and domain admins. I'll keep it for the entire organization. Now let's move on to assign workspaces to this domain. I can assign single or multiple workspaces to the domain, either by name, by workspace or security group, or by selecting workspaces according to the capacity they are associated to. In this case, I'll assign by name, searching for terms of interest, then selecting all relevant workspaces and easily assigning them at once. Returning to the domain screen, I can see centrally all workspaces which have been assigned to finance. To allow federated governance, we will soon introduce the ability to delegate settings from tenant to domain level, allowing domain admins granular control per their business needs. For example, export to Excel is set as enabled for the entire organization. However, in the finance domain, I'll choose to block the export capability. Now that we've seen how domains can be defined and managed, Let's see how consumers can gain from more optimized discovery and consumption experiences. For example, on the One Lake Data Hub, I can filter by domain, which will adjust branding to convey the business context I am in and filter the data I can discover to items relevant to my current business needs. In a nutshell, you've seen in this walkthrough how domains can be easily defined, associated, managed, and consumed in Fabric, allowing organizations to structure their data to business needs, thus providing a true data mesh as a service. Moving on to one copy. Today you are forced to copy data across lakes and clouds to break down data silos. You are forced to copy data out of the lake itself into different data engines to serve the data to users and applications. One lake with one copy aims to get the most value possible out of a single copy of data without data movement or duplication. Let's go back and look at our different domains in one lake. A large organization will typically have lots of data domains with different data owners. If we zoom out, we can see all these domains in one lake. To get a 360 degree view of your business, a single data item will need to span multiple domains. It is shortcuts that provide the connections between domains so that data can be virtualized into a single data product without data movement, data duplication, or changing the ownership of the data. Let's zoom back in and look at how. A shortcut is nothing more than a symbolic link, which points from one data location to another. Just like you can create shortcuts in Windows or Linux, the data will appear in the shortcut location as if it were physically there. Previously, if you have tables in a data warehouse, which you want to make available alongside other tables or files in a lake house, you would need to copy that data out of the warehouse. With one lake, you simply create a shortcut in the lake house pointing to the warehouse. The data will appear in your lake house as if you had physically copied it. Since you didn't copy it, when data is updated in the warehouse, changes are automatically reflected in the lake house. You can also use shortcuts to consolidate data across workspaces and domains without changing the ownership of the data. In this example, the workspace B still owns the data. They still have ultimate control over who can access it and how it stays up to date. Many of you already have existing data lakes stored in ADLS Gen 2 or Amazon S3 buckets. These lakes can continue to exist and be managed externally to Fabric. We have extended shortcuts to include lakes outside of one lake and even outside of Azure so they can all be virtualized into one lake. All data is mapped to the same unified namespace and can be accessed using the same ADLS Gen 2 APIs even when it's coming from S3. So far, we've only been talking about storage. It is compute that powers all the analytical experiences in Fabric. In Fabric, the compute is completely separate from storage. Separation of compute and storage is not an entirely new concept, but Fabric does not just give one multi-purpose compute engine for all analytics. Rather, Fabric provides multiple compute engines which can all access the same copy of data without needing to import it into another copy. 
This means you will always be able to use the best engine for the job that you're trying to do. Let's look at an example. You have a team of SQL engineers building a fully transactional data warehouse. They can use the T-SQL engine and all the power of T-SQL to create tables, transform, and load data. If a data scientist wanted to make use of that data, previously they would have to use a connector which goes through the SQL engine, or they would copy the data out of SQL into the lake. But with Fabric, the T-SQL engine is natively storing the data in one lake in Delta Parquet format. This means that data scientists can use the full power of Spark and open source libraries to read the data directly from the data warehouse in one lake. Same for business users trying to view reports in Power BI. Power BI reports use the analysis services engine to query data. This engine has been able to connect the data in two ways, importing the data and then loading it into memory. This requires you to maintain a copy of that imported data. The other way is to directly query the data from the source, which doesn't have an extra copy to maintain. However, direct query can be slow without the in-memory cache. With the new direct lake mode, the analysis services engine can read the Delta Parquet files into memory without making another copy, combining the best of import and direct query. If your data engineering teams are more oriented to Spark rather than SQL, they can use the full power of Spark and notebooks to transform and load data into the lake house. The T-SQL engine can still be used to create views and serve data to business analysts running SQL queries. Business users can view their Power BI reports using the same copy of data with direct lake mode in the analysis services engine. When defining the data strategy for your organization, you no longer need to optimize for different teams with different skill sets and preferences. Teams that want to work with SQL can work with SQL. Teams that want to work with Spark can work with Spark. Everyone builds the same data lake. There are no silos. With open access for OneLake, the same is even true for teams using engines outside of Fabric. Your data engineering team could use Databricks notebooks and use the ADLS DFS APIs to land the data directly in the lake house. They could also create shortcuts to existing ADLS Gen 2 or S3 accounts built through Databricks to virtualize the data into the lake house. All engines would still work over the same copy of data. We are doing a lot of work to optimize our engines to work directly with Delta Parquet as their native format for tabular data, as you've seen with the T-SQL engine for data warehousing and direct lake mode for analysis services for BI. Let's look at a quick demo of shortcuts and one copy. Several teams in my organization are responsible for different sets of data. These data sets reside in one lake, other places in Azure, and even in other clouds. To get a 360-degree view of our business with a common data mesh, I need to combine data across these different domains. Normally, this would involve lots of data movement, but with one lake, I can use shortcuts to just reference the data and build one logical lake without making another copy. One of these business domains in my organization has prepared some centrally managed and certified data as part of a lake house in one lake. To reuse that data, I'm going to add a new shortcut, which will allow me to create a reference to that data right inside my lake house. I select one lake, and I see all the lake houses I have access to. I pick the certified one that contains the order table I need. That table immediately appears in my lake house as if I had copied it. But because no data has been duplicated, and I'm just referencing the original table, I will always have the most up-to-date data available. For teams who are storing data in Amazon S3, we can do the same thing. Let's go back to shortcut creation. I can link to data even outside of one lake, including Azure Data Lake Storage and Amazon S3. Here's the second set of data I need. This data is stored in Amazon S3 in Delta Parquet format. I copy the path to the customer data set. When creating my shortcut, I select S3 as the source, provide some connection info, Select the data location, and that's it. Just like before, the customer table automatically appears in my lake house without the data ever needing to leave S3. Using shortcuts, my lake house now contains the order table from Microsoft OneLake, the customer data set from Amazon S3, and using another shortcut I created ahead of time, the product data set from Azure Data Lake Storage. With OneLake's one copy approach, the same data can be accessed by multiple compute engines regardless of whether the data is stored natively in one lake or logically available through shortcuts. A data scientist can train their models directly over this data using a Spark notebook. Here we can see a query running on those three datasets. 
data warehouse professionals can query and analyze that same data joining across those three datasets. And business analysts can simply navigate to the modeling view and start developing their data model. They can create rich BI reports immediately with great performance using Direct Lake. With one lake, I can easily organize my company's data into a single unified logical lake with one copy of data that can be used across domains and projects and by multiple compute engines. One lake empowers data engineers, data scientists, as well as SQL and BI analysts to all collaborate in a common data mesh on the same copy of data without any data movement or duplication. Moving on to One Security, I'm going to give you a peek at where we're going with securing your data in One Lake. We are in active development of the first phase of a feature we are calling One Security. Its goal is to let you secure the data once and use it anywhere. One Security will bring a shared universal security model, which you will define in One Lake. These security definitions will live alongside the data itself. This is important detail. Security will live with the data rather than living downstream in the serving or presentation layers. To do this, one lake will need to provide the necessary security features at the lake itself to support a wide range of analytic scenarios. More granular data security can be defined on a data item once in one lake. This will include table, column, and row level security. In this example, I have defined security on a data warehouse. That security will flow across any shortcuts which reference that data and be enforced by all engines, including when analysts and engineers access data using T-SQL, data engineers and data scientists use Spark, business users view reports in Power BI, and even in non-Fabric engines using the ADLS DFS API. Stay tuned to the Fabric blog for more details on the One Security Roadmap. Now let's go back to Adi one last time to talk about the One Lake Data Hub. One Lake Data Hub is the central location within Fabric to discover, manage, and reuse data. It serves all users from data engineer to business user. Data can easily be discovered by its domain, for example, finance, HR, or sales, so users find what actually matters to them. It allows efficient data discovery using advanced search, filter, and sort. And it also allows exploring by hierarchy of workspaces, so, use, so data can be easily discovered. Once you've selected an item of interest, Data Hub also allows a deep dive into details, exploring and reusing related items. You can access the detail page and then see metadata relevant to the item, such as description, endorsement, sensitivity label. It also shows you all of the related items, both downstream and upstream, that are using that item and that are easily accessible. And that all is to allow and encourage reuse. Various actions are available for that item. For instance, data preview, exploration, analyzing in Excel, creating a report on top of that data artifact, all of those can easily be done even by non-technical users. And last, it also allows you to understand how the data flows in Fabric. You can access the lineage view and perform lineage and impact analysis to assess potential impact of upcoming changes. The data hub is consistent and pervasive across your organization. That very same discovery experience is consistent across all of Fabric and is available everywhere users need to discover data. That way, it allows data reuse across your organization, as well as showing in-context capabilities of Data Hub in the various flows. For instance, that very same Data Hub is leveraged as a compact view when creating a shortcut in one lake, when getting data in the data flow, when connecting to a KQL database, when creating a data set, and when attaching a notebook to Lakehouse. All of those and more are leveraging the very same One Lake Data Hub to allow users to discover data everywhere. And that very same One Lake Data Hub is also the bridge to Office and to discovering One Lake Data there. It is available today in Microsoft Teams. And again, it targets both technical and non-technical users for data discovery, reuse, and exploration. Let's get a glimpse of the One Lake Data Hub in a live demo. Here are all of the goodies coming to you. The One Lake Data Hub is the central location in Fabric to discover, manage, and reuse data. You can discover data relevant to your business domain, explore its metadata and lineage, gain insights, and take action. 
Let's have a look. In this case, I filtered to HR data and now finance data, allowing business to optimize consumption and enabling a data mesh paradigm. I can view recommended items or navigate by workspace and explore properties such as type, owner, and sensitivity. Viewing endorsed in my org allows discovering curated data which is certified and serves as sources of truth. And I can also filter according to data item types, such as data set, lake house, warehouse, or other. Let's filter to lake house and then navigate to a workspace of interest. Next, I'm selecting Demo Lake, and I can dive into its details, viewing all the related items which are using this lake house, and take further action. Let's track lineage for Demo Lake by opening its lineage view. I can see the relevant notebooks and pipelines connected to it, as well as explore its impact analysis and view impacted items across all workspaces. Next, let's open the Lakehouse Editor. Here I can, among others, create a new shortcut to the data in the lake. When getting data, I'll select one lake. The very same data hub experience will appear in a compact mode to ensure consistency and completeness when exploring data across Fabric. Again, I can filter by business domain or item type, select an item, and then proceed with the shortcut creation. The very same one like Data Hub is also available in the widely spread Power Query Online. In this case, I'll open the Data Flow Editor. Clicking on Get Data, users can either use connections to external sources such as Excel or connect to existing data using the one like Data Hub. To see more information, I can click on the dedicated tab, browse data items and details as previously shown, and select an item to connect and get data from. Last, the one like Data Hub is not only available within Fabric or in other hosted experiences. It is also the way to discover and explore data within Office. Here we have moved to Teams, and once again, the Data Hub is available, providing a lens to all your Fabric data across all item types, allowing exploration by properties or business domain, gaining insights, and taking action. This concludes our overview session of One Lake and how One Lake along with One Lake Data Hub can help you break down data silos in your organization. On behalf of Josh, myself, and the Microsoft team, thank you for spending your time with us. We hope you found it educating and valuable to your organization. Patrick, oh my gosh. That One Lake. One Lake, that's amazing. Yeah. So, what I love about this is there's just one lake, one one yeah. lake, right? Yeah. That's a great name yeah. for my given tenant. And this really helps break down those data silos. I know you don't like data silos. I don't. And so if you're familiar with Power BI, think about your workspaces. Think about your workspaces. So I can have my a capacity that supports that workspace, a workspace backed by a capacity, and the data's in different regions. And this is really important for GDPR. Oh, yeah. And just compliance in general, right? So the data will be where your country boundaries actually are, which is amazing. That's great to see. What's even better about this is this open structure, this yes. open file format that they're talking about. We're following this, we're adhering to this, and it's just going to be available throughout the one lake. So it doesn't matter if you're using whatever compute, and we'll talk about that a little later in these next sessions, you can connect and use this file. Yep. Parquet and Delta, it's open format, whether you're doing it with inside of Microsoft Fabric or bringing your Parquet Delta files from other systems, even in other clouds, Fabric's got you covered. It's that one copy. It's that one copy of the data, and now we're introducing this beautiful concept of data virtualization to that one lake and shortcuts that'll make it easy for me not to replicate the data. Yes. I can connect to all these different disparate sources, sources within my lake, sources within Fabric, sources outside of my organization, and bring all that data in without copying it out. Yep. All right, Patrick, one lake. That's one where lake. the data goes. Amazing. But we need to get the data into one lake. Yep. So I think Weehong and Shireen have got us covered they're gonna show us the magic of Data Factory and what that brings to the Microsoft Fabric platform. Can't wait. Hello everyone, welcome to Vue. Today we're excited to share with you how we can get started with Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric accelerates data potential for the era of AI. It provides a unified data foundation for all analytics workload and integrates Power BI, Data Factory, and the next generation of Synapse 
to offer customers a price performant and easy to manage modern analytics solution. Every analytics workload works seamlessly with the one leg to minimize data management time and effort by eliminating data movement and duplication. Fabric reduces the pain of integration and facilitates better collaboration with a solution that makes it easy to connect and use the different analytics tool your team needs. It is open at every layer with no proprietary logins. Fabric empowers business users with deeply integrated Microsoft Office and Teams experiences. And it delivers AI Copilot to accelerate analytics productivity, discover insights, and enable you to create custom chat GPT solutions with your data. Today, we're excited to announce Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric. With Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric, we are bringing the best of our pro data integration and citizen data integration offering into a single SaaS-led experience. Data Factory empowers you with a modern data integration experience to ingest, prepare, and transform data from a rich set of data sources, whether it's databases, data warehouse, lake house, real-time data, and more. Whether you're a citizen or professional developer, you will be able to transform the data with intelligent transformation and leverage a rich set of activities. With Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric, we are bringing fast copy data movement capabilities to both data flows and data pipeline. With fast copy, you can move data between your favorite data store blazing fast. Most importantly, fast copy enables you to bring data to your lake house and data warehouses in Fabric. Out of the box, Data Factory in Fabric enables you access to more than 300 scalable transformation with generation two of data flows. Most importantly, it includes AI-based data transformation. A rich set of data orchestration activities enable you to compose data movement, transformation, and logic together. Data Factory in Fabric provides you with what you need to build a modern data integration solution and what you need as part of your modern data stack. Delivering the world's data integration platform for all users on every cloud hinges on the ability to provide connectivity to every business critical data source. Data Factory in Fabric supports more than 170 connectors out of the box, from on-premises data sources to cloud databases to analytical platform, line of business application, and more. Now, at the same time, we provide a connector SDK that will enable anyone to build connectors which can be certified by Microsoft. Our goal is to empower every person in the organization to get the data they need, transform the data to the right shape, and land the data to the right data destination. With Data Factory in Fabric, you get enterprise-scale data ingestion, transformation, and orchestration with data flows and pipelines. Before I dive into each of these capabilities, Shireen will be showing you a demo on how you can get started with Data Factory in Fabric. Thanks, Wee Hong. In this demo, I will show you how the data flow and pipeline experience can create a powerful and comprehensive data solution. Here, we have the homepage of Data Factory in Fabric. Let's start by creating a data flow. Users who are familiar with Power Query will appreciate the familiarity of the low-code yet customizable experience. With over 170 connectors, you can get data from many sources. As you can see here, I have already imported my two tables, my orders table and my products table from my worldwide importer SQL database. Along with the two tables I have brought in, I have a customer's Excel file that I have on my file system that I would like to bring in. I am just going to drag and drop the file into my editor. Immediately, I am brought to the connect to a new data source page, where I can see that my customer's file has been uploaded. Data preview allows me to see my data before selecting the data to clean and transform. Now that I have brought in my data, I am ready to transform data at high scale. Along with altering columns and rows, I can also merge and append queries. Let me first start by merging my customers and orders query. I can specify the queries I want to merge, along with the column I want to merge on. Now, I can see a new query with all the columns from my customers table and one column with the nested data from the orders table. Along with merging and appending queries, I can also transform the data using group by. 
Group by allows me to group rows in my query based on the values in the selected column. For this example, I will group by the related titles for each customer. Now we can see that a new transformation has been made to the query showcasing our new output. With data flows, you can set your output destination to store your transform data. In this example, I will write the results to a table in a data warehouse. Let's put in the server and connection credentials to my data warehouse. I will choose a destination target and give the table a name. I will leave the default as replace, essentially meaning that any tables with the same name will be replaced in my warehouse. I will quickly rename my data flow to Contosa Data Flow, and then I can publish it. And with that, my data flow is complete. Now let's design our pipeline. Fabric Data Integration includes the rich data orchestration capabilities that currently exist in Azure Data Factory. And with pipelines, customers can perform sophisticated data orchestration at an enterprise scale. Users who are familiar with ADF will appreciate the familiarity of the low-code yet customizable experience. Here is our existing lake house. You can get started with building pipelines directly in the lake house. In this example, I will use the Copy Assistant to copy data from multiple Azure SQL data tables to the lake house. The Copy Assistant empowers any users to quickly get up to speed with creating pipelines that bring data to the Microsoft Cloud. Let's connect to an Azure SQL database and bring in some tables. Let's bring in four tables from my database. After selecting the tables, I can see a preview of it as well. Then I can choose my data destination output. I can either create a new lake house or use an existing lake house. Let me choose an existing one. Let me give my new tables names. And just like how I did in the data flow example, I will make sure I overwrite my tables just in case there are any duplicates in my lake house. I'm provided with a quick summary of what I just did. And just like magic, we can enable users to copy multiple tables quickly to their favorite data destinations. The pipeline experience also includes a library of activities that will enable rich and sophisticated data orchestration. I can add a data flow activity to execute the data flow that I previously created. And while data flow provides no code transformations, we can also leverage notebooks for the code centric transformations. Let's add a notebook activity, and I will select an existing notebook that I've created that sorts the products in my product table by color. I will save my pipeline, and now I will run the pipeline with the notebook and the data flow. And there you go, the pipeline ran successfully. I hope you enjoyed this short walkthrough. With Data Factory and Microsoft Fabric, we aim to bring the best of our citizen data integration and pro data integration experiences into a single delightful SaaS delivered experience. Back to you, Weihong. One of the capabilities you saw in the demo is Dataflow's Generation 2. Dataflow Generation 2 is the next generation of Power BI Dataflows supporting both ETL and ELT patterns enabled by the rich low-code Power Query experience. With Data Factory and Fabric, we have enhanced Dataflow's Generation 2 to deliver scalable transformation beyond what is supported today, leveraging the Fabric compute. This means that your Dataflow can potentially leverage the rich set of transformation with the scale needed for the most complex transformation tasks. Most importantly, we have heard your feedback and your request time and again to enable you to save the results of the data flow into a data destination of your choice. With Data Factory and Fabric, we enable data flows to support various output destinations so that you can persist the data output of data flows into your favorite destination. Data Pipelines and Fabric is an evolution of Azure Data Factory pipelines. Out of the box, you have access to a rich library of activities, and whether you're ingesting data into the lake with fast copy capabilities or orchestration the execution of notebooks, stop procedures, and more. To help you get started, you can use the Copy Assistant to get started quickly with copying data from your favorite data sources to the data destination, for example, the data warehouse. As we work towards the preview of Data Factory, we're excited to have the opportunity to work with Simon from Hitachi Solutions who is an early adopter of the Data Factory. Thank you, Simon, for working with us on Data Factory 
and the feedback that has helped us tremendously in driving product innovations. Hello everyone, my name is Simon Nuss and I lead a team of data and analytics consultants here at Hitachi Solutions. We are proud to partner with the Microsoft Fabric team and help bring their fantastic vision to life. With Microsoft Fabric, there is no need to stitch together different products to form a Frankenstein's monster. Instead, all data movement, storage, engineering, business intelligence, and data science needs are found within a single comprehensive experience. There is no other product on the market that provides this level of breadth, depth, and cohesion. With our support, our customers have embraced the Fabric platform and mastered these revolutionary capabilities. One of the most remarkable features is Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric, which has proved instrumental by empowering any business user to orchestrate their data without relying on a separate data team. In fact, as we demonstrated Data Factory to our customers, their eyes lit up at the possibility of leveraging enterprise-grade data orchestration in a simple, elegant, and code-free experience. We at Hitachi Solutions and our customers are thrilled by how Microsoft Fabric Data Factory makes data orchestration easy for everyone. This is an exciting new frontier, and we can't wait to explore it with you. Thank you. Next, monitoring your data flows and pipelines is top of mind. You want to know when your data flows and pipelines complete refreshing the data, or when they fail. With Data Factory in Fabric, you'll be able to use the monitoring hub to monitor all your data flows and pipelines. You can also deep dive into detailed analysis of the different stages of how your data is moved. When things go wrong, you can leverage Data Factory in Fabric to troubleshoot things quickly. Another important top of mind is end-to-end -end lineage. End-to-end -end lineage of everything in your analytics project is important. Now, with Data Factory in Fabric, you get all of this. Let me invite Shireen to show you the monitoring and lineage capabilities that you can use for your end-to-end -end data integration lifecycle. Let's see a live demo of the Monitoring Hub. As you mentioned before, the Monitoring Hub allows users to monitor artifacts between different workloads, making the monitoring experience simple and consistent. With the combined capabilities of the Monitoring Hub and the artifacts and data factory, such as data flows and data pipelines, I can get a full view of all the workloads and drill into any activity within a data factory artifact. So let's see this in action. Here's my Contoso Analytics workspace. On the left ribbon, we can see the Monitoring Hub button that takes me directly to the Monitoring Hub. Once you've landed in the Monitoring Hub, you will see a list of current artifacts across all workspaces as seen here. I can use the rich filtering capabilities to view a selection of the artifacts that I'm interested in monitoring. On the right-hand side, I can click on the Filters menu and apply more filters. I am first going to add a filter to see only the completed activities. I will then add some additional filters so that I can see my data flow, my data pipeline, and notebook artifacts. And lastly, I only want to view the artifacts in my Contoso Analytics workspace. And there you go, changes are reflected instantly. As you can see, it is easy to monitor my different artifacts between different workloads, making it simple for data engineers to monitor notebooks, data pipelines, and data flows in one easy to read page. After I've selected my filters, you can see that they are displayed as pill buttons at the top of the table. We can also easily deselect any of them by clicking on the X button. I can also check for more details by clicking on the info button, which pops up when I hover over an artifact. General details are displayed on the ribbon, along with pipeline run ID and related artifacts. For more in-depth monitoring, I can click on the name of the artifact to enter into a more detailed monitoring page by clicking into my data pipeline name. Here, I can get a full understanding of my data pipeline execution status through different views. I can also drill down into each of the activities that are running in my data pipeline. For example, I can click on my copy activity to get an in-depth analysis on how the copy activity ran. When we go back to the monitoring hub, the column headers are specified for each experience to better fit the usage. I'm able to add different artifact types into the central monitoring table, but the column headers won't change unless I switch to a different experience. Now, let's go back to my workspace and view my data lineage. Let's scroll down to one of my pipelines and click on the three dots and click on View Lineage. Here, I can see that my pipeline is connected to both my notebook and my lake house, 
making it easy to visualize how my data is connected to all my different artifacts in Fabric. You can see how easy it is to build and monitor powerful data solutions to help ensure that activities can be tracked efficiently across workloads. We're excited to work with partners globally, empowering them to be successful in integrating with Microsoft capabilities. Today, we're excited to show you product innovations that we have been working with partners like Delphix. The Delphix and Microsoft team has been working together closely to deliver a multi-cloud data compliance solution that you can use in Data Factory. Tess from the Delphix product management team will share a demo with you. Thank you, Weehyung. We all know the cloud is filled with personally identifiable information, and compliance risks continue to grow as sensitive data flows to downstream environments. Manually addressing these risks can lead to delays in data access, hindering innovation. That's why together with Microsoft, we created Delphix Compliance Services for Data Factory, leveraging our mutual commitment to partner success and hands-on product collaboration. It's been an ideal way for us to be better together, delivering the best of data compliance and data integration. Our solution lets you achieve multi-cloud compliance in Data Factory, all in three simple steps. First, you'll import a template containing pre-built queries. I've already loaded that here. You'll then select the data source that you want to mask, which I've preloaded to. Second, define your masking rules. In a central mapping table, select the columns that you'd like to mask and choose from Delphix's pre-built deterministic masking algorithms. These replace sensitive data with fictitious yet realistic values, preserving their analytical utility. Third, configure the function and then click Invoke to automatically mask data as a part of your data flow. Delphix Compliance Services will mask data as configured in the mapping table. Masking is applied consistently, ensuring referential integrity. Ensuring that values are masked the same way across all environments guarantees that integrated analytics continue to work with masked data. You'll see that Lysandra Preston will become Iwana Villar wherever it appears across datasets. And after these three easy steps, your data is now secure and ready for use. With Delphix Compliance Services for Data Factory, compliance will no longer stand in the way of your business insights. We invite you to try it out and learn more by following the link on your screen. Back to you, Weehyung. With AI built into Data Factory, you can now accelerate and automate all your common data integration tasks. For example, you might need to extract data from an unstructured data source like a web page or a text file without a well-defined set of rows. With AI built into the factory, you can now do all of this. You can provide examples of what you want to extract, and powerful AI capabilities underneath the hood will learn from the examples and create the data factory data flows to extract the data that you need. Let's take a look at the demo. By example, data extraction and data flows provides a no-code, data-for-citizen, user-friendly way to extract data from unstructured data sources that is unmatched in the industry. Web by example allows users to easily extract data from web pages, like the one we see on the left, where a matrix style gallery can be turned into a tabular structure, including connector names, publisher, in this case Microsoft, categories and products as columns. Using data flows, customers can simply specify a few sample values for the data outcomes that they're looking for. For example, we'll extract the connector name, by inputting just a couple of examples, Data Factory data flows will be able to apply its smart AI heuristics and extract the right data from the entire web page. In this example, we will also extract the category for each of these connectors, which can be done by inputting a single value, because at this point, it already understands the structure from this web page. Last but not least, we will also extract the list of products where each of the connectors in the data flows are available today. Once users get the desired data extracted from the web page, they can move forward with applying any other transformations out of the 300 plus supported transformations in the editor experience, leveraging a high visual, no code experience and invite citizen users to achieve more with their data. In this example, we will just apply a group by operation to count the number of connectors by connector category. Now, let's transition over to text by example. 
Text by Example provides similar capabilities, allowing users to extract data from semi-structured text files. In this example, this text file contains customer records in blocks of five lines, where the first line corresponds to the company name, followed by the contact name, title, and contact details. After bringing this data into any DI tool, the results in a single column input, which is very tedious to reshape and clean up by hand. With Add Tables from Example, data flows allow users to focus on the desired data outcomes and leave the complexity of data transformations to our AI logic. With just a couple of examples from the first two columns, it can infer the right repetition pattern and extract the rest of the customer records from the file. From that point on, specifying new columns such as contact title is even easier. With just one sample value, data flows gets the job done. Now notice carefully, after landing in the editor, customers can see the full sequence of applied transformation steps in the ribbon above to achieve these results. These steps can be further explored or customized by users and extended with any other data transformations. Like in this case, we're going to derive a new column based upon the contact name and title from this table using column by examples to generate a very particular format. Last name, uppercase, comma, first name, and title in parentheses. And there you go. It's just that easy to transform data using data flows. And with highly visual capabilities such as data profiling, users can immediately get a sense for their value distributions of their data. Users can leverage data profiles to understand value distributions on their data, address any quality issues such as missing or duplicated values, or simply exclude specific data values as needed for their scenario. In this case, we will just exclude any customers that have a contact title equal to owner. By example data extraction and data factor data flows truly is an easy to use experience, helping you to accelerate and automate the transformation process. Later this year, we'll be delivering co-pilot experiences in Fabric. Data Factory Copilot will bring game-changing capabilities that will enable you to enhance your developer productivity and empower you to achieve more. Data Factory Copilot will enable you to use natural language to create the data flows and data pipelines that will help you ingest, transform, and orchestrate data. Let's see a sneak preview of this demo. I'm super excited to demonstrate the impressive capabilities of Copilot and Data Factory in Fabric. With Copilot, you can effortlessly create complex pipelines using natural language. Additionally, it can provide you with useful suggestions for the next steps. Let's start by launching the Copilot from the home page. You will then notice that the Copilot shows up on the landing page on the right. Let's provide Copilot with a natural language description of the tasks you wish to achieve. I will ask Copilot to copy data from SQL to a container in the blob storage. The Copilot smartly provides a list of connections, and we don't have to remember the exact name of the connection making you more productive. Let's choose Contoso Sales SQL and Finance Blob Storage. We can also request Copilot to perform additional activities to help us build a metadata-driven pipeline, such as looking up the country name column from the country metadata table to obtain the source tables based on the listed countries. This command will immediately create activities on the canvas, including lookup, for each, and a well-parameterized copy activity. You can regenerate the pipeline for an alternative one, allowing you to choose the best generated pipeline for your use case. To regenerate, let's click on the Regenerate button. The Copilot regenerated an alternative pipeline with the same user input that was passed earlier. Additionally, Copilot provides you with IntelliSense for connection selection and suggests the next steps. In this case, let's run this pipeline. Within seconds, the pipeline will execute successfully. This is how we're bringing Copilot into Data Factory to improve data engineers' productivity, making data integration easy by allowing you to describe complex tasks in natural language. Thank you for viewing this sneak preview. We're excited to share with you what you can do with Data Factory in Fabric. In the next few months, we're going to continue to drive continuous product innovation and working with you very closely and listening to your product feedback. One of the top asks is CI-CD support for data flows and pipeline. 
we'll also be driving continuous improvements to how you can get data into your lake house and data warehouse, focusing on the, delivering the best experience. We'll make data discovery of trusted data sources easier and enable you to get from data to insights quickly. Thank you for the opportunity to share about Data Factory in Fabric and what you can do with it. We can't wait to see what you will build with Data Factory in Fabric. And thank you. Now that was an exciting session. I saw data integration capabilities for not only engineers or professional developers, but for citizens developers, very low code, Adam, very yep. low code. So we can leverage data flows or we can leverage pipelines to get the data where it needs to be using the right orchestration. That's right. That's amazing. Yeah. And Patrick, do you know what? I saw in there that was amazing. Data flows can, you can actually set the output destination for the data flow. That's amazing. <gasps> oh, I've been waiting for yeah. that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. There were also highlights of the monitoring hub, which was amazing too. So we can see where the, the process of those jobs are, which will be great. Now, I'll say this, Shireen showed us something. Yes. It was, it was, it, was, it blew my mind. She, Shireen it was showed amazing. us something. She literally used Copilot to type up a few words and it created a dynamic pipeline for me. It was amazing. It was oh. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. That, that Patrick was, oh, he was just broken on yeah, that. I was right? absolutely he, broken. He loved it. There were some great customer stories also yeah. that highlighted how they're actually using these technologies today to solve some of the more challenging data integration problems. All right, Patrick. We're going to hand it over to Tyler and Shireen now, where they're going to show us how we can connect to Microsoft 365 data inside of Fabric. Thanks, Adam and Patrick. One of our main goals for Microsoft Fabric is to empower every person in every organization with the data they need. So we're excited to expand a bit more with you on the capabilities of Data Factory in Fabric, specifically about how integrating Microsoft 365 data in Fabric can transform your business. You may have heard that your AI, and more specifically, your predictive models are only as good as the data you give them. Microsoft 365 combined with Fabric is the differentiator that turns the potential in your data into competitive advantage. Now, what does this mean? With Fabric, all your Microsoft 365 data is natively integrated into a unified, seamless experience for enterprise analytics. This is possible through Microsoft Graph Data Connect, bringing this data into Fabric where it's unified in Microsoft OneLake. And then the built-in Synapse services in Fabric unlock the right insights, and Power BI visualizes those insights for your end users, all of which accelerates intelligent business decisions. With this Microsoft 365 data, your organization is empowered to navigate the modern workplace environment. Your leaders can get insights on customer relationships, business processes, security and compliance, and people productivity. And I'll add, this isn't a data set you have to go find or create or purchase. Your company already has this massive treasure trove of data in the Microsoft 365 apps you use every day. All you need is the connection and the analytics stack, and Microsoft Graph Data Connect and Fabric are just the tools for the job. Today, we have data sets galore, as you can see here, available from a huge variety of Microsoft 365 sources, including Azure Active Directory, Outlook, Teams, SharePoint, Viva Insights, Microsoft Groups, and more. And here, you can also see which data sets are available right now or coming soon. We're continuously growing this list of available data sets, metrics, and solutions to empower additional use cases based on feedback from you, our customers. Phew, that was a lot. Now I'm going to pass it off to Shireen to show us a demo of this in action. Take it away. Thanks, Tyler. Today, I'm excited to show you this new capability where you can now bring your Microsoft 365 data into Microsoft OneLake and Fabric. Let's get started. In Fabric, once you've created a data pipeline, you'll see the copy assistant with the new Microsoft 365 connector. Simply click to set up your link to Microsoft 365 through Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Once your connection is configured, you can then choose and select the data set that you want to bring into Fabric. Then, with just a few clicks, your Microsoft 365 data appears in one lake in an analytics-ready format. But wait, there's more. Once you open one lake from your workspace, you can now immediately see the copied Microsoft 365 data and leverage all the analytics tools available in Fabric to generate insights. Plus, you're also taking advantage of the built-in enterprise governance and security that helps protect all data in Fabric. So, 
To summarize, you've now seen how we can connect Microsoft 365 data through Microsoft Graph Data Connect, available now with Data Factory and Fabric. You can now unlock rich productivity and collaboration insights from your Microsoft 365 data by bringing it into Microsoft Fabric. Thanks for tuning in. Now back to the show. Adam and Patrick? All right, Patrick. Shireen showed some amazing things leveraging Microsoft 365 data inside of Fabric. The beauty of this is you already have access to that That's data. Right. Before right. trying to get that and use it in your reports or analytics, it was hard. You had to wire all these things up. But now in Microsoft Fabric, we just make it easy for you to consume it. Yeah, and I get all the data I need. I can look at what's going on across Microsoft 365 and see who's doing what, what are they doing, just to keep tabs on how things are moving back and forth in my organization. Okay, Patrick, what's next? Adam, you know what's next. My favorite topic, Synapse Data Warehouse. Ooh. And so we're gonna have Priya come tell us all about it in the next session. Hi all, I'm Priya Sathi, Director of Product for Synapse Data Warehouse. I'm super excited to be here at Build and announce the launch of Synapse Data Warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. In the next 30 minutes, I will be talking about the key capabilities of this next generation data warehouse. I have some exciting demos and you will also hear from some of our customers and partners who have been working closely with us from the get-go and our early adopters. So let me start with an overview of Microsoft Fabric in case you missed Arun Ulog's breakout session announcing the launch of Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric accelerates data potential for the era for AI. Fabric provides a unified intelligent data foundation for all analytics workloads and integrates Power BI, Data Factory, and the next generation of Synapse to offer customers a price performant and easy to manage modern analytics solution. Every analytics workload works seamlessly with one leg to minimize data management time and effort by eliminating data movement and duplication. Fabric reduces the pain of integration and facilitates better collaboration with a solution that makes it easy to connect and use different analytics tools your team needs. It is open at every layer with no proprietary lock-ins. Fabric empowers business users with deeply integrated Microsoft Office and Teams experiences. And it delivers AI co-pilots to accelerate analytics productivity discover insights and enable you to create custom chat GPT solutions with your data. Now, let's talk about Synapse Data Warehouse in Fabric. Synapse Data Warehouse is infinitely scalable and open. We adopted an open data lake format of Delta Parquet, replacing the traditional native SQL storage. And bear in mind, it is still a transactional data warehouse, but it's the first transactional data warehouse natively embracing such an open standard data format. The warehouse is fully integrated with all fabric workloads right out of the box. It is auto-optimized as well, so you don't need to hire a team of deeply skilled engineers to constantly change configurations to manage your performance to meet your business SLAs. All of this while you get full benefits of the SQL ecosystem. Secondly, under the covers, we've replaced dedicated clusters with serverless compute infrastructure. There is absolutely no physical provisioning or setup required at all. When a job comes in, we assign compute resources within milliseconds. As data volume or query demands change, we automatically scale up compute to meet that demand. Resources are pooled, hence we provide significant efficiencies and also pricing. Let's walk through the key capabilities of Synapse Data Warehouse and Fabric. The data warehouse is based on our world-class SQL Server and is built on our established 
SQL Server Query Optimizer, and the Distributed Query Processing Engine, giving you petabyte scale performance. This was benchmarked back in 2020. Now I'll summarize the key capabilities in this generation across these three pillars. It comes with simple and intuitive experiences. It is fully integrated with Data Factory, Synapse Spark, and Power BI, catering to the needs of both the citizen developer and the professional engineers. You can build virtual warehouses by creating shortcuts to your data anywhere in the lake, even cross clouds. Data becomes instantly queryable and you can cross join across warehouses with ease. Data Warehouse also comes with an automatically generated Power BI semantic layer that is dynamically optimized for the best performance and security. Next pillar, Synapse Data Warehouse is lake-centric transactional data warehouse. Data ingested through the warehouse is stored in Fabrics One Lake in open Delta Parquet format, making it accessible by any compute engine that reads this standard. You still get full ACID multi-table transactional guarantees, just as you'd expect from a data warehouse. We just changed the storage. There is no knobs required to be tweaked to get the right performance. The data warehouse is provisioned and optimized for performing at any scale right out of the box. Data can also be recovered in just a few clicks. Third pillar, Synapse Data Warehouse is also an enterprise-ready platform, just like all Fabric workloads. You get end-to-end -end performance and cost visibility out of the box. It is always governed via integration with Purview and has ability to view lineage, apply sensitivity labels, ensuring your data is protected and can only be viewed by the right users in your organization. Data Warehouse is also secure by default and comes with SQL security constructs such as object level security, role level security that users have come to love and trust. Let me show you a demo of how easy it is to get started and build your own Synapse Data Warehouse. In this demo, I'm going to walk you through the capabilities of Synapse Data Warehouse and show you how we embody no-code experiences, full-stack integration, and automation. Here I am in the Data Warehouse homepage in Fabric, where I'm presented with samples and tutorials to get started with. I start by clicking on New Warehouse Artifact by simply giving it a name and choosing a sensitivity label. This sensitivity label is automatically applied to any downstream artifact using the data warehouse. A warehouse is immediately provisioned for me with no additional setup required on my part. I see a familiar intuitive relational database experience and can start by writing code or creating a new data pipeline that's fully integrated right here. The pipeline experience is a no-code experience as well, and I'm presented with several connector options. I connect to my SQL database application source. I can view the data in the tables. I pick the exact tables that I want to bring into my data warehouse. My destination is already pre-populated. Sort the data mappings for all of the tables. This is all just automatic. That's all I had to do. I save my pipeline and run it. I can monitor its progress right here. When I go back to the warehouse, I see my tables are automatically created for me. Synapse Data Warehouse gives me a few options to analyze data and write queries. I can filter data in the tables without writing any code. I can also use any of the pre-built templates, such as this one, to right-click and get my top 100 rows. I can also use the T-SQL Query Editor, which comes with full IntelliSense, and I can write my own T-SQL queries. The 
Results of the queries can be downloaded to Excel as well in just a click. Data Warehouse also comes with a visual query editor. I can just drag and drop tables into the canvas and I can do complex joins with just a few clicks, selecting the right tables and the right columns without writing a single line of code. Now, not only can I see the results, but I can also view the SQL and I can edit it further as well. Now I can add other warehouses into this very same experience with zero data movement. I just go ahead and pick the warehouses that I have access to. And right here within the Object Explorer, I can see the secondary warehouses as well. I can go ahead and look at the data in the tables. I can also drag drop tables and create queries just like I did previously. So with just a few clicks, I've been able to add an additional warehouse to create a single virtual warehouse and span queries across the two, creating one query by cross-joining with a second, all without any data movement. Now, right here in the model view, I can get my data warehouse BI ready with the integrated Power BI experience. I can look at the relationships between tables that are automatically detected, or I can even create my own relationships to ensure the BI report is performant. I can also add new measures, which are key business metrics or semantics. Every data warehouse ships with a default data set that is automatically kept in sync with the warehouse and self tunes. Now with one click, I can create a Power BI report. I can see my tables. I can even see all the fields and the measure that I had just created. I can see my table has 29 million rows and I can just start dragging and dropping fields and creating Power BI reports just like I normally would. Now back in my workspace, I can see my entire project is ready with the warehouse, pipeline, Power BI dataset, and report, and I can view its lineage end to end. In summary, I was able to create a warehouse, load and transform data with a pipeline, cross join with another warehouse with zero data movement, and create a Power BI report with no additional integration required at all. And all of this without writing any code and all under five minutes. This level of simplicity and full stack integration is benefiting all our customers. I want you to hear directly from one of our customers who has been using the product. Here's Bobby Azerbad from Aon Corporation. Thanks Priya. Hello all, my name is Bobby Azerbad from Aon Corporation. I lead our data services team at Aon Reinsurance. I'm also the chair for our reinsurance architecture practice group. Warehousing is pretty central to what we do at Aon. With Fabric Data Warehouse, there are two key challenges we are looking to simplify. The first challenge is around complexity. Currently, we leverage multiple PaaS and IaaS services in Azure, such as Azure Synapse dedicated SQL pools, Azure Data Factory, Analysis Services, Azure SQL, among many others. These services integrate with a host of other tools, including Tableau, Snowflake, Databricks, Excel, and others. The second challenge is around minimizing data duplication. With an ever-growing suite of data products, data is often copied from source to target to fuel the effort while providing autonomy for developers. The growth of data replication with past services is becoming exponentially inefficient, leading to multiple points of failure and performance implications. We have created an end-to-end -end solution fabric. It took just a couple minutes to spin up the warehouse, ingesting more than 250 million records using pipelines and applying business logic, leveraging store procedures that leverage database queries across both the transactional warehouse and the lake house. It was great to see the direct lake mode in action too, combining the performance of import with the agility of direct query. Overall, we are really excited about how Fabric Data Warehouse provides simplicity and reduces data duplication. 
on simplicity through a SaaS-based data warehouse, invisible barriers between PaaS and IaaS solutions simplify, which reduces our complexity challenges from before and provides a simple and intuitive warehouse experience. This allows our development teams to solution with less overhead and greater collaboration. On data duplication, we are minimizing data duplication in three key ways. First, using Lakehouse SQL endpoint in cases where we just need to use SQL as the serving layer. Second, we are leveraging direct lake mode, which avoids importing data directly into Power BI. Third, the data is written in the same open parquet delta format, which means that all other analytical engines can also read the same data without any data movement. Thanks to this time saved, we'll be able to place more effort in evolving AI and NLP capabilities that are being integrated within Fabric. Back to you, Priya. Now that you've seen the experiences, let me go behind the hood and explain how we achieved no knobs performance. As you saw, the performance was by default, without the need to specify workload groups, distributions, indexes, or set up any other configurations. The secret sauce is our well-established SQL Server query optimizer and the distributed query processor, the only engine with a petabyte scale benchmark published in 2020. We also implemented autonomous workload management, multi-tiered caching, and automatic generation of statistics, making the query plan produced to be optimal with number of nodes required to execute each step in the plan. All of this put together, you get world-class performance. Now let me show you how we store the data in the Fabric One leg in the open Delta format, making the warehouse managed files easily shareable with data scientists in the organization. In the last demo, I created a Synapse data warehouse and ingested data. The warehouse SQL engine provides full transactional guarantees. Data loaded into the warehouse is stored in open format of Delta Parquet in one leg. Let's take a look. I have installed One Lake Explorer on my desktop, which is just like OneDrive, giving me full visibility into all files I have access to in the Fabric One Lake. It's an intuitive namespace hierarchy. Expanding my workspace, I see my warehouse. Expanding further, I see my schema and the tables I'd created and loaded data into. For each of the tables, I see their delta logs and data stored as Parquet files. Now let me show you how easy it is for me to add a shortcut to this warehouse into a lake house, enabling me to collaborate with data scientists in my organization. Back in my workspace, I start off by creating a brand new lake house. I start by just giving it a name this creates a lake house for me immediately. I go ahead and click on new shortcut and choose one lake as my shortcut source. I find my warehouse, clicking next, I see all the tables that I have access to in the warehouse. I pick the aggregate sales table and that's it. When I refresh my lake house, I now see the warehouse managed aggregate sales table is accessible. Here, it's just a simple shortcut. There's no data movement at all. I can now go ahead and spin up a new notebook and start using this table in my code. Build machine learning models and see my results right away. That was just so easy to collaborate. I did not have to create pipelines, duplicate my data, write transforms, or make any copies. You've seen how the data warehouse embraces open data formats and enables collaboration between the various roles in the organization. I wanna share with you how partners like Hitachi Solutions are already adopting data warehouse and fabric and driving benefits for their customers. Here is Simon Nuss from Hitachi Solutions. Thank you, Priya. Hello everyone, my name is Simon Nuss. 
And when I'm not leading a team of data and analytics consultants here at Hitachi Solutions, you'll find me moderating the Power BI subreddit, one of the largest and most amazing communities of data experts. As a leader in the Power BI and Synapse space, our team was delighted to lend our expertise and help bring the Microsoft Fabric vision to life. Along this journey, we've deployed countless Microsoft Fabric projects, such as real-time streaming, AI ML experiments, exploring OneLake, and of course, implementing many Microsoft Fabric data warehouses for our customers. And I'm delighted to share one of these stories with you today. Hussman is a US-based company that provides display merchandising and refrigeration services for food retailers. Being a leader in this space, Hussman has data-intensive demands that Microsoft Fabric is uniquely positioned to meet. And our team of data engineers worked with the Hussman team to migrate their entire data warehouse from Azure Synapse into the Microsoft Fabric data warehouse to test its new features. I'm excited to share that within a few short weeks, we successfully migrated pipelines for 250 tables covering nine subject areas, such as sales, distributions, and project management. We were shocked at how easy everything was. It just worked. But it was more than a migration. The new data warehouse experience unlocked an array of net new capabilities, such as performance by default, allowing the Hussman team to operate their data warehouse without the complexities of indexing or table distributions. Second were Delta Lake backed SQL tables, providing native interop with Spark, no data movement required. This lakehouse design means that your database is your data lake. So without any changes, the most advanced AI ML Spark capabilities were delivered directly into the hands of the Hussman BI team. Third, performant cross database queries. They are an absolute game changer, allowing Hussman to move away from traditional monolithic data warehouse patterns and explore modern paradigms such as data mesh. And lastly, the Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse seamlessly integrates Power BI features, such as defining relationships and creating measures, all within a single pane of glass. Throughout this whole adventure, one thing became very clear. Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse unlocks a vast array of new capabilities to action your data faster, better, and cheaper than ever before. I hope you're as excited as I am to try out these new features. Back to you, Priya. If you are an existing Synapse customer, using dedicated SQL pools, you're likely wondering about the migration from Gen 2 to Fabric Data Warehouse. Let me give you a sneak peek into some of the key capabilities in our roadmap that'll land in the future. In the future, you'll be able to link your existing Gen 2 databases into Data Warehouse and Fabric with just one click. A near real-time replica is automatically generated and maintained, giving you a healthy isolation between data management capabilities in Gen 2 and consumption in Fabric. Replicated data is automatically converted to Delta Parquet, and hence it is easily queryable from the rest of Fabric, including Spark and Power BI. Let's take a look. I'm back in my Data Warehouse homepage. Here, I can see I can link a dedicated SQL pool. Clicking on this brings up all the Synapse dedicated SQL pools that I have access to. I choose the one that I want, and that's it. This kicks off the replication process, and all the objects I selected are replicated. These are kept up to date in near real time. Once it's done, I can see that my data is available in Fabric. I can start and cross-join my Gen2 database with other warehouses and lake houses that I have in Fabric using three-part naming. My citizen developers can also use the Visual Query Editor to build queries without writing any code. In addition to this, the Data Warehouse Editor is integrated with Copilot. I can use this to convert my Gen2 code to Fabric code that can then be executed in just a click. I can create relationships between tables and build Power BI ready performant data models so that my users can build their reports. I have several applications that connect to my Gen2 database. When I'm ready, I can enable server redirection and with this, all connections going to Gen2 
are automatically redirected to my Synapse Data Warehouse in Fabric without me having to do anything. This way, I can migrate all my data, code, and applications one step at a time as I'm ready. And all my applications and reports will continue to work in Fabric as they did with Gentoo. Well, that's it, folks. Super excited to have made available to you Synapse Data Warehouse in Microsoft Fabric. I gave you a whirlwind tour of some amazing new capabilities that I have shipped with this world-class transactional data warehouse, including separation of storage and compute, simplified experiences, cross-database querying, auto-scaling, and so much more. I hope these will help you easily build your next generation data warehouse and modernize your data estate to get insights from your data and take action. You can get started with our documentation. We have details on all the capabilities I just talked about and so much more. We also have our six month roadmap published. There's no purchasing involved. You can start easily with a free trial today at fabric.microsoft.com. With this, I'd like to thank you for watching the session and I will see you next time. Thank you. Patrick, you weren't wrong. Priya showed some amazing things with Synapse Data Warehousing. Yeah. And I love that it's, it's this open data lake with Parquet and we can leverage those things using the power of the SQL ecosystem. Yeah, so it's just built on our world-class SQL query optimizer and processing engine. This is not anything new. We've been developing and enhancing this thing. And now, guess what? We're talking about petabyte scale. Ooh, petabyte oh, scale. It's Adam, amazing. Right? I'm excited And about that. when you create it, guess what? Our favorite thing happens. It comes with the Power BI data set. <gasps> and that Ooh. Power BI data set is kept in sync whenever you make changes to that data warehouse. Oh. It's absolutely We're just amazing. making this too easy. Yeah, we're making, making it, too, it easy. too easy. We're making it too easy. All right, Patrick, that was a great set of amazing. sessions that we watched today, but there's more. You need to return tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time, where we're gonna continue the journey exploring what Microsoft Fabric brings to transform your business. See you tomorrow.